podcast. The thing that I've been enjoying more than anything else of the commentary run of episodes is the time before the commentary starts getting lo- longer and longer. <laughs> <With each episode. laughs> As you try harder yeah. and harder to to stall <laughs> before the, getting to the end of the commentary, the oh, ending, so the inevitable ending, is coming nearer and nearer, and we're not prepared. So we're just like, well, if the episode doesn't start then oh, it's fantastic you know, vorpax doesn't go away we did like 20 minutes on i don't even remember what it was we've been recording on like truncated timelines recently where we need to do it quickly and we're still adding chunks of yeah. time to the but, beginning of these comments. not only that but just like today we talk for like 15 minutes before we even start and then we start yeah you gotta get the juices flowing dude. talk for another 15 minutes try to remember how to do a podcast incredible it's, i don't think it's that i think it's sort of an acknowledgement that you know there's a finite number of things even four people can say about mortal Kombat baraka and maybe four. you just need to think more about the effervescent vitamin tablets that you want to talk about <laughs> before you get the actual comic book just one uh production note at the moment should i be worried that i'm not seeing uh waveform on my no, it's fine. I've had okay. that problem before. Yeah, cool. I am seeing yours. Uh, we got some guests on this one. Don't <laughs> Seamless. we? <laughs> Seamless. <laughs> Wait, we're um, starting? Listeners at home are hearing a third voice. Is there a fourth voice on this uh, podcast as well? We love guests, don't we, folks? <laughs> Damn, look at that waveform. That is a strong Did strong I throw my form. voice all the way to Australia, or is that? <laughs> God damn it. Two guests. This is going to be chaos. This is chaos realm levels of uh, chaosery. You can tell I've had a long day. It is 8 p.m. our time, the time that we were going to start originally. Mm-hmm. We, yeah, we got that I hour back. Up. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it is 11 a.m. and 54 minutes here. <laughs> yeah. Holy smokes. Where is here? Here and is. Who are you? Oh, hi. Uh, I, am, uh, I am Paul. I am the. Paul from Melbourne, Australia, as you yeah. may have heard, immortalized by Neil's sound drops for better or worse. Immortalized by hating advertisement to the point of willing it out of the existence of the Australian release. Of- <laughs> yeah. I still Paul, who we tell directly every time there's a commercial bumper in our can I? I think I think I've told you this, Neil, but I I have like a legit visceral reaction to that now where I've heard it so many times and often it's said like so abruptly and so suddenly and with so much like urgency. I almost feel it like the same way you feel like a, an alarm telling you to wake up in the morning that like feeling in the pit of your stomach or like where I'll just be, I'll have the podcast on in the background. I'll be washing the dishes or something. And then I'll just hear like Coy's go, come on, and I'll just like, I'll, I'll just fumble <laughs> my hands and like drop what I'm doing. Right. It's like an infomercial where like you've attempted to like put crack an egg into a pan and somehow you've ended up completely on the floor covered yeah. in cake batter that wasn't even there before. I just get commercial pulled into surely there must be a better way. Of course, we all know Corey. Here with the chaos realm. We all know Corey prefers non-commercial Paul, but. Anti-capitalist Paul. Yeah. Yeah. Accelerationist Paul. Who's that? Who's that fourth (laughs) voice we heard? Hello, it's me. Yeah, I wanted to break in and say like, uh, this is Dominic, by the way. That's my name. But like, I have such a weirdly kind of specific name uh, in dominic that like anytime i hear someone else called dominic or dom that i just jerk my head at the re- like the reaction to that voice like if you've got a name like tom i guess people are saying that name around you all the time because there's probably sure. multiple toms but if you're dominic or dom it's like anytime someone says that name and they don't mean you it's just like it's like getting an electric shock to your body you just like Whoa! <laughs> you feel personally wronged that there was a even the potential that there could have been a separate Dominic in the first place. It's like that thing of like when someone is like seems like they're waving to you and then they're waving to someone else. Uh huh. Yeah, which <laughs> yeah. always happens to me. Uh, we're gonna let's do a little test here. I, I'm gonna play some sound clips, and w- when we're at the end of this, I want you to tell me how you feel. Tony Toretto's legendary cousin Dom. Tony Toretto's legendary cousin Dom. Tony Toretto's legendary cousin Dom. How, how did that make you feel, Dom? I feel like I'm on like an American morning show with <laughs> the production <laughs> quality of that. <laughs> Dominic famous for the Monk Crumble, of course. Thank you. 
Oh my yeah. god, I forgot about that. Yeah, I uh, forgot about all those songs I did a long time ago. Yeah, I I might drop that into this episode now that we're you know past Halloween. It does have some relevance for this issue, actually. <laughs> it actually doesn't. It has less relevance. <laughs> well, I remember hearing some that crumbling. Monk, I remember hearing that monk crumble song and losing my mind that someone else, <laughs> apart from the podcast hosts and myself, would think and engage with Mortal Kombat Conquest enough to make something based on it. And that they were Australian too. Yeah, that's outrageous. We've all got a very particular brand of brain poisoning, I suppose. <laughs> where, yeah. and, where that is yeah. like the cross section of things you want. We like took a sip of that water, but uh, it yeah, only like water. disintegrated like a very specific portion of our brain. Speaking of sipping something, I bought something special for oh my myself. God. For that's this segue segue alert. That I will be drinking. At. I didn't, but should I get one of my final Sailor Moon sparkling waters? I've been really piecing those out. You got the Sailor Moon one still, right? Because we got to save don't. that for the sa- What? You motherfucker. I drank it. <laughs> God damn it. We're going to save that for the Sailor have? Moon episode. He had six cans. He couldn't I wait. could buy another one. <laughs> no. It must have been what, pretty good. What do you have left? Uh, let me. I have to open my fridge. Hang on. <laughs> All right. <laughs> this motherfucker. Every time. <laughs> Welcome to Corey's Fridge Corner. <laughs> I heard that. Good. That's I hope you good. did. It's a, it's a it's a bit. Okay, so I've got um, let me see here. One of these is. If you're drinking one now, it's the Chibi Yusa one. That one's gone already. Apparently. Oh, what good. was the cucumber one like? I haven't drank that one yet. It's right here. I can answer that question for you. Is it, oh, is that let's Sailor it. Jupiter? It is. Okay. Are we doing that one? No. What's the other one? Um, it is Sailor. Uh, I'm blank. I was stalling for time because I was I was blanking on which planet name color. I needed to say. Uh, purple. Sailor Mars. Yeah. All right. Hold no. on to that. Okay. You can hold on to that one. Wow. Yeah. We just found out who the true Sailor Moon fan is. It's actually. Me. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah it's, it's me. It 100 is me. I mean, I've got the T-shirt, but like you know, so do a lot of people. I've watched 200 episodes of the show. So Corey says fake fan. <laughs> Corey does, yeah. It's a. I'm shocked I don't have that on the soundboard. I'll put I thought that, that in was post. on the soundboard. I think it's just on my phone for me. Fellas, to uh, this smell is fucking weird as hell. <laughs> the tab also did kind of a bad job of opening the can. Um, mm-hmm. God, I I gotta say the idea like vegetable water. It's oh, cucumber gonna... water. Dude. I know that's it's normal. Oh, I'm sorry. Is that not a vegetable anymore? I I think cucumber's <laughs> a fruit. It's got seeds inside it. That's the, not no. It no, does have stop. seeds. It does have cucumber seeds. Cucumber vegetable. It is a vegetable, though. I think cucumber is usually considered a vegetable. Usually, vegetable. <laughs> that's if you Google botanically it. considered <laughs> fruits. Though many people think of cucumbers as vegetables, the scientific definition <laughs> indicates that they are a type of fruit. Cucumber is usually considered a vegetable because of how it's used in the culinary world. Doesn't matter. It's technically a fruit. Suck it. This is like tomato. It's like I I know it's a fruit, but I always consider it a vegetable when I'm like eating it for nutrition. Yeah. Is it culinary world the place you go in Sonic Shuffle? Is that joke for anybody? <laughs> this is like whenever I whenever I hear Bring people back. whenever I hear people talk about the letter Y in the sense of it being like sometimes referred to as a vowel. Yeah. I want to strike that person. That yeah. makes no sense to me. Well, uh, yeah, but then I think of the word cyst yeah. and that. Yeah, but it's just a consonant. It's just a word of consonant. It's not a it's consonant a because then it would be like nah. kiss. <laughs> it's a vowel replacement. It's not a vowel. I'm with you, Paul. I don't like this. It's sometimes like it? a vowel no. and cucumbers is sometimes a vegetable. Yeah. Agree to disagree. Uh, this. What about shepherd's pie, though? Oh, good. Uh, no crust. Um, can yeah. I make a quick uh, clarifying statement that I don't know if I've been able to make on They Made Another One yet? Sure. Why not? I don't feel anywhere near as strongly about that topic as I made it sound. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it's called an incredible bit. <laughs> a legendary, like a, a lifetime spanning bit opportunity presented itself. I grew up with Shepard. I mean, we would, my, my mom would make a I pot roast. I can't believe this. we're doing this. Okay. She'd make a pot roast one <laughs> night, and then the next night, a shepherd's pie with the leftovers, and there was never a fucking crust. And I agree. Most, yeah, but you're American, and they cook things weird. Most shepherd's pie I've shepherds ever here. eaten. Mo- what, they don't in Australia? <laughs> I'm saying uh, we, we also sh- have them We here. got sheeps, but I never thought about sheeps. That's not a word. We got, we got sheep, but we, <laughs> I've never really thought about shepherds. 
as like an occupation. <laughs> you must have them. I mean, now we call them sheepers. Yeah, but they're they're always in like the ba- they're in their like mysterious little caves with their gnarled, nobled staves. <laughs> my my whole point, just quickly, is that m- the vast, vast majority of shepherd's pie I've ever eaten is not of a crust. But I was Agreed. convinced and vindicated, uh, in part with Dom's help, that you can absolutely do that, and people do do it. And you that know, I think it's, it's it, yeah, it's more of a product of it being like stoolboard, which I think is mostly how I've consumed it. In one of the volumes of Scott Pilgrim, there is a recipe <laughs> oh for God. vegan shepherd's pie, and I don't believe oh, yeah. there's a crust involved in that. Yeah, well, it's because so. but it is it's and vegan and Canadian, crust is famously mm. made from sheep's bones. Oh, yeah. okay. Well, that explains it. Neil, what are you drinking? Uh, oh, yeah, you well, guys, looks- turn your attention to the Discord. Mm-hmm. Um, Boom! Your boy has Aussie lemonade. Aussie lemonade style. style. What monster Jesus. energy monster. plus juice? Aussie lemonade flavor. Now hold on. Before wait Neil a says Anything else? I'm I have reading a the blurb. This I have. I have several. This I have blurb a question. is important. This is why I needed oh, wait, to share the blurb. Wait, wait, wait. I, allow me to read the blurb quickly. Uh-huh. Out, do, should I be reading this out loud or in my own head? I think no, no, one read of the, it out loud. I think yeah. fine. Read Dominic or Paul need to read it out loud. Oh, okay. Let's yeah. go with Paul. All right. I'll take the first paragraph. You take the second. Okay, there we yeah, go. Yeah, I like yeah. that. Let's do that. I'll see the website. Inspired by the land down under, with over 10,000 <laughs> beaches, the Great Barrier <laughs> Reef, and home to the most exotic creatures on Earth, we created Juice Monster Aussie Style Lemonade. I believe that's is the most exotic <laughs> citrus on Earth. Nah, I'm sticking with my original plan. <laughs> They've got juice down there. Monster's twist on classic lemonade, we hit the ideal balance of tart and sweet with a burst of fresh citrus flavor. As always, it's choc- it's, choc- it's chockers for fuck's sake. Chockers. Chockers. It's chockers. Chockers with our world famous Monster <laughs> yeah. Energy blend. Crack a coldie and give it a go. It's chockers. That's an Australian term, right? <laughs> I want to fight this can of beverage. It was so blurry, I couldn't actually read that. That's all. <laughs> Unleash the beast, monsterenergy.com. We're going to crack this bad boy. This is fucking horrible. It is you... 8 p.m. It provides zero context as to what specifically makes what? it Australian. And like... also, there's like tentacles on the front, like it's from an octopus. Well, like, maybe that's... it is. What? Maybe that's the secret ingredient is octopus. What does mm. the sentence Ink. home to some of the most exotic citrus on earth what does that mean like oh, you don't what? you don't know about the secret, le- the uh, secret lemons yeah our secret exotic is. citruses the secret citrus like australian it's, it's like it's like in the simpsons with the shelbyville lemon tree it's like right. that but there's like <laughs> five, thing. there's five of them are spread around the land and you've got to find each of them like the triforce <laughs> to make this lemonade the secret is they're, they look like lemons. They're shaped like lemons. They're yellow like lemons, but they taste like limes, dude. Dude, those sprite it's weird lemons. down here, mate. Cucumbers are sometimes fruit. Makes no sense. <laughs> Tomato is sometimes a vegetable. What does it taste like? Does it taste like lemonade? Australian lemons are vegetables. Um, yeah, what does it, it taste tastes like? like lem- it tastes like fucking lemonade. I, I don't understand what like makes what? this Australian either. <laughs> I was hoping you could shed some light on it. Is is no. The answer is, is, lemon, brand, like the answer is branding. The answer is branding is what makes it Why? Australian. It, are you reading? Wait, can you look at the temperature and are you reading it in Celsius now? <laughs> That's the difference. <laughs> right. How has yeah. it changed your perception just, of yeah. the world? I, how do you feel? How how many U's are you putting in the average word? <laughs> I'm putting extra U's in. It's kind of crazy. My I'm looking at this copy of Sonic Colors and suddenly there's a U. I was going to say, what color is the is the <laughs> beverage itself? I'm also uh, want to pronounce yeah. the last letter in the alphabet as Z. Mm-hmm. But I'm not sure if that's an Australian thing or not. I think that's just that's the, like a just <laughs> Queen's I'll, English. I'll take it. Okay, we'll do that in Canada, right? It's the uh, it, uh 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 it's the fucking King's spent, English. Thank you. I smoked. No, it, he didn't it, kill his mom. I didn't, to I didn't not realize the Corey was English. an imperialist. Jesus I, I think, excuse me. So show some respect to King Prince Charles, please. I think King George or Charles or Jeff or whoever the fuck they got going over there is a <laughs> King real, Jeff. Str- a real King strong Jeff? boy. No, that was that was a real monarch. I think I've just made the decision to not edit this episode at all. So. <laughs> it's no. Jeff G E O U F F. G E O U. You're oh my god. 
I'm taking psychic damage from this recording. You know, we do that uh, Game of Thrones thing where we just like take a normal name and like change the letters a bit. Mm-hmm. That's just that's how you yeah. do it. Yeah, and I throw in a couple extra vowels instead of Jeffrey. It's Joffrey, right. or remove a few, I guess, or just sub them out. The, uh, put in I the spend... random miscellaneous umlaut. Mm. I spent three dollars on this beverage, thinking Are I was going to get some, and that's to, let's be clear, that's, that's like probably 15. like six dollars. <laughs> yeah, it's like six Celsius dollars, and <laughs> it's just fucking lemonade. There's nothing. Uh, Aust- I don't feel more Australian. You could get that for a crisp four forty eight. Wait, 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 Neil. Can you say Melbourne quickly and maybe <clears throat> Melbourne? There you go. That's that's the effect. <laughs> Melbourne. Is that, is, did I hit? Did I hit it? <laughs> Melbourne. You said it perfectly. <laughs> now, maybe, like, now, it sounds question. like you're trying to carefully call for help without alerting someone else. <laughs> it sounds like it sounds like you're trying to call for help while drowning in a sink. Mel- <laughs> Melbourne. <laughs> Jesus Christ. You're choking on like food that you shouldn't have eaten, like a plastic piece of fruit or something. Or so you don't want to like alert people to it, but you, you do man, need man. help. Yeah. You don't want to alert too many people to to your situation, so you're kind of just trying to pass it off as normal, but really you're choking. I'm going to drink another one of these later, but I'm going to mix it with a Foster's. Mm. How dare you? Um, is Foster's really... It's Australian oh, for beer. Look, look I don't want to be the guy who's like, oh, you guys are from Australia. I'm going to say every oh. Australian thing I can think of. Corey. But, but what? Corey. Yeah? We have made their entire identity being Australian. We can fix podcast. that now. We can well, fix to that be fair, today. we've we done can nothing. Humanize them. We've done nothing to humanize ourselves in any other way. True. I think that we've both agreed that Australians are not human. I mean, we're not here to fuck spiders, are we? Hold on, did he say that or was that the soundboard? Yes. <laughs> Seamless. <laughs> <laughs> you'll never you'll never know Corey. Uh, just some strong fucking lemonade <laughs> what a horrifying thought now my question is uh dominic and paul whichever one of you is closest to a convenience store could you go track down the most american <laughs> energy drink you can find like I, wait is that. it is, Amer- is monster american or australian i don't know so. but maybe they've got like a can with like the stars and stripes on it, that would nah, be that so would be don't... Bang Energy. There is definitely a red, white, and blue Bang Energy out there, and don't spend money on it. I think we've company. really mostly just got Monster and Red Bull. So yeah, Red Bull is probably we the most American. We don't get like, at least not that I've really seen much of. We don't get like over overtly Americanized products. We just get the products from America. Like okay. they, we they get are products just, from yeah. America, and they're like right. really overpriced. Like you'll get yeah. a peanut butter cup for like. You know, four dollars, which is a lot. Four dollars Celsius. Yeah. Four dollars Celsius. Yeah. yeah. Four that's, Celsius. Four Celsius that's dollars. That's like a hundred and a hundred Fahrenheit dollars. And what's your? What is it? What do you have instead of Burger King? Hungry checks. Hungry, Hungry checks. But yeah, but yeah. there are also Burger King establishments here. Are there? Wait, yes. I didn't know that. Absolutely, Where? Not franchise. Is that one hundred percent? They're just rogue stores. <laughs> yeah, I'm. I'm. I'm not sure what to do. I, I know. So. Fairly recently, I mean, I don't know, recently is a relative, I guess, but we had uh, some Taco Bell uh, places open up here. But before they Finally. opened, before they opened, there was a place that was actually, it was, it was more of like kind of a fine dining place. It was not a takeout place at all, but it was called Taco Bill. What? I enjoy that. <laughs> I've, never heard of, I've never heard of this. Is That's this a incredible. Melbourne thing? <laughs> it, I, don't, I don't think it's even a franchise. It was just one place called Taco Bill. <laughs> Taco Bill. This is the best excuse I'll ever have to mention the sit-down restaurant I went to in Hanoi, Vietnam called Cowboy Jacks. <laughs> that did yeah. American food. Hell yeah. I, I would eat at Cowboy Jacks. That, that yeah. would be, see, this should be something like that here. That's like our equivalent to a freaking Outback Steakhouse or whatever so, it is. Sure. We do have something like that. It wasn't in that that weird, there's like a sort of, I don't even know how to explain this. It's like an arc, but it's like sort of wide at the top. I don't remember. I don't know if that's a franchise or just like a very specific <laughs> restaurant. I think, you saw, I think you saw a UFO actually. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so when I went to Cowboy Jack's, just as a quick, I like this anecdote a lot. Um, I needed to get a ride there i was meeting friend of the show mitch because he was working in vietnam at the time and i was meeting him for lunch Micho. and um mitchy mitchell poppins <laughs> yeah Micho exactly poppins. The, the one and only the very same and um so i needed to get a ride there and there was a, a uber equivalent app called grab 
But the SIM card that, <laughs> that I had sounds gotten, very threatening. <laughs> yeah, the SIM card that I had gotten for my phone already had somebody who had made a grab account with it so i couldn't okay. so i had a really hard time setting up rides with like one of the other competing apps so what i did in this case mistake number one was just went up to the crowd of dudes who were giving people rides places with the app and showed the guy the app screen and the price and just sort of like non-verbally hand signal sort of like, huh? that we would be good to go on that and he just sort of drove me there but then upon arrival at the destination, he just started sort of asking for increasingly large amounts of money. Oh, and then Jesus. what had happened, the rookie mistake that I made was when he, he was hardballing me, I had to take out my wallet to retrieve more cash. And oh, no. I had only just gotten to the country. So I had a lot on hand. And he, this is incredible. He literally reached into my wallet as I was holding it and thumbed through the bills with his fingers looking for the biggest ones, Jesus. took only those, and then left. Wow, dude. Someone so got grabbed. I went to go see Mitch, and I was like, I think I just got robbed. I, got, <laughs> I, like, I, had a, I have a similar story where I got kidnapped in India. What? What? Yeah. Okay. That's Why a hell of an opening. <laughs> On the show, I'm going to call it kidnapping. I was a child. I was a teenager, so I think it counts. <laughs> oh, that Jesus. makes it a little more like mild. Um, where, where did I land? Not I was going to Hyderabad, but we landed. At, I landed in Mumbai, I think. My mom was working in Hyderabad, and I was going over to visit her, so I flew on my own, right? The long flight. I get into the airport in India and somehow make my way outside of the airport trying to find the domestic terminal, and then I can't get back in because of the armed guards at the door won't let me back in. Jesus, yeah. So the quote-unquote taxi drivers start getting my attention, right? Oh, it's, mm. it's the other airport. It's the other airport. You got to just come with us. We'll take you there. And I went to one of the guards, and I was like, these guys say that they're a taxi, but this is the world's oldest Toyota van. Um, and he's like, with his gun in his hand, said, go with them. You'll be fine. <laughs> what? So I did. And now I'm supposed to meet my mom at the domestic terminal for our next flight, right? And they proceed to drive me around the city uh, for, I think, 45 minutes, stopping at every ATM and insisting I take cash out to pay them. Holy shit. You can't shit. say this right now, but I'm sweating. Yeah. And I, so me being a brain genius, I keep using this American Express card that my mom gave me for emergencies, which is not going to work over there. And being like, it's not working, it's not working. So they would drive me to the next one, the next one, the next one. And then finally, I just was like terrified i'm miles away from the airport at this point and i say i can give you 40 dollars american if you get me there i had i had 60 dollars. i didn't even give them all of the american cash i had on me but i had like 60 dollars i hadn't converted like stuffed in my socks still and i gave them that i paid them off and they finally took me to the airport proper but like they had me for a while holy shit that's fucking insane yeah wow i tell you you sound a lot smarter than i would have been at that age <laughs> Well, I probably would have just been like, yeah, let's keep going. <laughs> uh, sure, I guess we'll find one that takes Amex eventually, boys. I guess it makes sense that there's all these ATMs on the way to the airport because people might need to take money out. People might need cash. Yeah, this is well, it's, it's a really big airport you guys got here. It's the whole town. Like, the more uh, I think about it, like the weirder it was because like there was two of them, right? And I was in the back and they kept telling me like, oh, you'll be fine. You'll be fine. You're our brother. You're our brother, right? Uh, but one of them would always walk me to and from the ATM to make sure I didn't try to get away. Fuck. Wow. Where the fuck would I have gone though? Like I had it was middle of the night. There's not a lot of street lights in the part of India I was in at least. So Well, speaking of defenseless children who would benefit from the protection. Wow. Of Fucking <laughs> king of segways, <laughs> Dominic. Holy Some kind shit, of protector. Man, is, are we? <laughs> That's right. That was real. That was on the mic. Dude, that was uh that was incredible. Uh, I, I actually I had a follow up question that wasn't about the story. It was to you guys, but fuck it, we don't need to ask it. With a segue <laughs> that good, I'll save it. I was gonna give you guys a chance to talk about like your histories with Mortal Kombat or whatever. I think we should. I think we but, should do that. But okay, gonna, do we want to waste the segue that well, good? Can we no, like we, ed ed edit it in earlier so that we, <laughs> we can just that fucking banger? We can just tell the audience that we read the four of us. The Mortal Kombat Baraka one-shot from Malibu Comics. The story is titled Babality. And, uh... Tony Toretto's legendary cousin, Dom. That was me throwing the comic book down. It hit the soundboard and played that sound. I'm leaving it. <laughs> Where are you going with this? Shout out to Dave, who's not here. 
And we're going to talk about this comic book episode. But, Paul and Dominic, have you guys read these Malibu comics before? Uh, Dominic, you go first. We'll proceed alphabetically. Okay, I'll, I'll go first. Um, I've read, like, a, a couple of them because I know that you, like, uploaded them to the, the yes. Discord that we're a part of. I did share um, scans I remember the homies. reading, Legal. like, the the intro versions, you know, like, the, the ones that were sort of, the um like blood and thunder john, the early issues john tobias like the, oh, right. the ones that were sort of copies of of his the good stuff. ones yeah the good ones um yeah. i remember reading those and i quite enjoyed them um i've read a couple of like the mk is it mkx the yeah. um the other the other dominic did that one right he wrote that anyway i read those and those um, were quite sean, good sean kittleson oh that was sean sean yeah shout yeah. out to sean the other Dominic is uh, we go away. We got to edit that one up. The other Dominic is the one we don't like. Right. Um, yeah, we'll leave that part in. <laughs> Toretto. <laughs> oh, well, you know he's not yeah. listening. Dom Toretto. Uh, we're not big Dom fans Toretto of wrote a series of MK comic books, and yeah, there were, were a lot more cars than <laughs> there should have been. Specifically, motor combat Jesus. adaptations. A, yeah, a wild. Not the most wild series, probably not the worst comic books for Mortal yeah. Kombat, but yeah, it was an interesting run. Uh, yes, so I've like read like the original intro ones and then like the MKX ones. I probably haven't read like a lot of the in between ones, but mm-hmm. um, I've listened to a few of your episodes on the Malibu ones, and they don't sound great. Uh, as a whole, no, no, they're and not. individually, no. <laughs> just like in both aspects well, okay well while we get, while we got you dominic uh what is your uh just off the dome impression did you like reading this comic off the book? dome how'd you off the dom how'd you feel about dome. this baraka one shot i felt pretty good about this one um i like i i really appreciated its whole uh lone wolf and cub vibe of him yeah. protecting this this baby with his essentially samurai swords that come from his arms. Um, it's probably the only uh, piece of Mortal Kombat media to actually make me feel anything about Baraka. Like, yep. normally he's just like the uh, he's general the goon. Dude. He's the monster g- g- dude with, like, swords in his arms. And he's still the monster dude with swords in his arms in this one, but he has emotions and feelings. Um, he, need, he, yeah. he needs... He needs help, guys. <laughs> he does need help. Yeah, he's all alone out there. Yeah. So I liked it. Paul, how about you? Have you read any of these Malibu comics before? Um, I haven't. So I was a big comic person when I was a lot younger. And I, I don't want to say I grew out of it because that is a shitty thing to say. But I just, for whatever reason, stopped reading a lot of comic books. Sure. Um, and... It's weird. So I have a, a thing, It's whether it's a, a brain sickness or whatever it is, but I love being spoiled on things, right? So I will frequently okay. listen to episodes of podcasts where they discuss films, media, um, whatever, TV shows that I haven't seen and go into full spoilers and I will listen to them before I even see the thing. Yeah, I also do that. I, I personally believe you're doing podcast listening correctly. Thank you. <laughs> and my, my big thing about this is like without, you know, going on a screed or anything, but I, I don't think that experiencing a thing should be minimized to I didn't know it and now I know it. Like, sure. To me, calling something spoiled because you know what happens in it is kind of a real disservice to the thing and right. experiencing it is very different. So in a roundabout way, you know, I haven't read many comics, but I've listened to all of the uh you know, podcast episodes where you've discussed the Malibu comics. So I have mm-hmm. audio booked them in some form. <laughs> so you know um, that they're garbage. <laughs> but the, so well, the thing is, I have no frame of reference uh, to right. compare them against because I, I know what, you know, good comics are. I've obviously read a bunch of comics, but like I haven't read any recently. And uh, going, so going through this Baraka one shot was very much a, um, I don't know, it was interesting. It was kind of, you know, a sort of unique thing that I've, not I've I've not really firsthand experienced a Mortal Kombat story in this form, so it had some novelty value to me okay. um, for being you know the first one of those. You know I have some 
questions about certain <laughs> like law things. Guaranteed, we don't have answers for them. But right. I'm pretty sure Mark has anyway. all the answers you need on that one. Yeah, Ma- uh, yeah. I'm glad Mark was there to, to clarify a couple of things for Mortal me. Mortal Kombat, uh, Malibu Comics legendary editor Mark. Everybody's favorite Mortal Kombat <laughs> conquest. <laughs> Mortal Kombat. Everybody's favorite Mortal Kombat character Mark Panishia. Yeah, well, we'll there get we go. To that I guess. This but um, Aussie lemonades really fucking me up, mates. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. What's but up, no. mates and gamers? I'm really I'm here with another lemonade review. This one's Mike's Hard Lemonade. Uh oh, it chipped my tooth. I tried chewing the bottle again. Anyway, this has been whatever I said the name of this bit was. And uh back to you, Paul. I Neil, can we isolate that quickly? <laughs> yeah, we'll get that isolated for sure. That'll be on the soundboard for next episode. Be- being here live for the Corey disdain is very good. <laughs> disdain. <laughs> I don't know about that. There's not a sing- there's not a single person from Denmark here. Um, just- right. Oh fuck's sake! <laughs> yeah. uh, hold on. When I was reading Hamlet, I was lo- oh I was always <laughs> okay. Yeah, we'll go with that. But I was just gonna say when I was reading Hamlet, I was always like, damn disdain. Got oh, some shit. issues. Shout out to the disdain of the day, uh, Kevin Magnuson, who got pole position in Brazil. Oh, K Mag, what a what a great day what for a you. fucking legend that was so fun welcome to anyway, the extension believe, of strat 2 <laughs> anyway i believe paul was talking we'll just cut that out and Corey can stick it in strat 2 and we'll yeah <laughs> no, I was gonna no say, explanation so... that i'm in there <laughs> it's uh you know it was good i enjoyed it i will say that yeah i have i have some mild concerns and it wasn't like a you know particularly life-changing uh read in terms of you know what it was it was right. a very short story told you know quite efficiently found a couple of excuses mm-hmm. to bring some characters together and make them fight each other which is you know what a mortal combat thing should do what more could you ask for right yeah before we give our takes on it i do want to take this opportunity to sort of expand on the question a little bit and if y'all want to give a sense of like what angle you're coming at this from by which i i guess more accurately i mean like what your Mortal Kombat history is in a broader sense, like what your baseline kind of is for getting to just sort of being handed a random comic issue, like, (laughs) and just Uh, what's the deal? What's the deal with airline food? What's the deal with Baraka's arms? Paul, we'll start with you. We'll go reverse alphabetically. Yeah. Good, good. Take Um, your time. Okay. No, my my Mortal Kombat history. Take your time more. I need you to talk slow. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So, no, it's weird. My my history with Mortal Kombat is extensive. Like, I I remember being obsessed with Mortal Kombat two specifically. Hell yeah! Um, a very uh, sort of I guess formative early memory that does not go away uh, is I remember going to a friend's birthday party uh, around the time that Mortal Kombat two was in arcades or was just released in arcades and it being like a weird like laser tag place or something like that that had like a small section of arcades. Yeah. And one of the things was like, oh, you know, for an hour of this day, we're going to set all the arcade machines to free play and you can just, you know, go nuts for an hour. And myself and a friend of mine immediately noticed that there was an MK2 machine there. And so, you know, we went in, we got our stamps, you know, on our wrists or whatever to mm-hmm. signify. To say you're under 21, so you can't yeah. drink. Yep, and then we just ran to the machine and did not move from there for, for a good hour. Completely ignored our friend whose birthday it was for <laughs> most of that time. But um, yeah, it was, I don't know, it was a big part of my life. I remember also being in uh, primary school and having some sort of like uh, artistic, you know, free drawing, draw whatever you want, uh, you know, mm-hmm. task. And I remember handing in, a piece of paper that was can I, uh can i guess yeah. what it is based yeah. on what i was doing at that same age okay was it reptile and scorpion fighting in the uh deadpool the deadpool stage no oh can i guess what sure. it is based on what i think neil was doing at the time okay it is a drawing of sub-zero and scorpion in the ferrari from outrun <laughs> <laughs> god damn it i want that <laughs> no it's got to be on the internet right Brought to you by the Sega Dreamcast or whatever. What'd you draw? What would you draw, Paul? Sorry. I drew Liu Kang transformed into a dragon in full fatality mode, oh, like shit. biting, I think it was Scorpion in half, and just blood everywhere. 
hundred percent drew that. I hundred percent drew that too. But yeah. mine looked like Trogdor, probably. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, and I remember getting sort of pulled aside and spoken to about the, uh, you know, the uh, yeah, the blood, the blood, blood of it takes away the red crayons. Yeah, but it's like, oh, yeah. this is normal. It's just in the game that I like. But it was one of those things. But yeah, MK was was huge for me. I I kind of. Um, went all in when the first 95 movie came out or 96 movie. Yeah. Um, that was big and formative. You guys got it a year later. Yeah. I th- not, wasn't, wasn't that much. Wasn't that much later. I remember going to see then, uh, 27 for, an- <laughs> <laughs> <Shit>. <laughs> for another birthday party. I went, uh, for my birthday party, we went to go yep. see Mortal Kombat Annihilation, which that was... That implies that Mortal Kombat Annihilation is Mortal Kombat 2021 <laughs> to Australia. <laughs> <laughs> which didn't go as well. Um, but yeah, it's it's been a thing. I sort of fell off the games after or during the, the sort of 3D era. Um, mm. I came late to the sort of GameCube. I picked one up, I remember, a couple of years after it was gone and played a bunch of, I think it was Deception? Uh, no, yeah, Deadly Decept- Alliance. Deadly Alliance. Deadly Alliance and Deception were on GameCube. Yeah, that was Deadly Alliance was the one because I remember one uh, apart in the extras there was that terrible Edema song, Immortal. <laughs> yes, where Fuck, it starts uh, off with the chunky guitar riff and him just screaming, "Let's fight," which was right. incredible. And they had like the green screen music video with footage from the game, and it was perfect, amazing. <laughs> and Taven, of course, based off of the lead singer of Edema. Of course. <laughs> How's the how's the Taven video coming along? By the way, Neil, I'm I'm thinking about it. <laughs> I'm thinking Sorry. about it. I had to get gotta, that in there. I know you've you've asked me to check up on you every now I and then. Appreciate it. I'm I'm I got I got some concepts kicking around. Yeah. My favorite thing about the band Adema, which I definitely had heard of before, right now, was when John Travolta gave them a shout out at the Oscars. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> Adema wow. Dezima. A deep cut. <laughs> <laughs> the wickedly talented <laughs> Adima Dezima. <laughs> oh, I wish I could change my Zen costume. <laughs> and then Elsa from Frozen just runs on stage and screams, and "Let's like, fight! Let's fight! Let's fight!" <laughs> Shit. The trick of oh. podcasting, if you've ever wondered, is being able to make jokes about shit you've never heard of. Oh, I'm dying. <laughs> That's the ultimate skill. When in doubt, make that John Travolta mispronounces his name yeah. joke. <laughs> Cultural <laughs> touchstone everyone can relate to. Yeah, so that's my history with Mortal Kombat anyway. Nice. And then, of course, you watched Mortal Kombat Conquest. Oh, oh yeah, Jesus, yeah. sorry. The whole thing, like the whole name of this pod, the reason for this podcast's existence. Um, yeah, I was, Conquest was on at a weird time here. It was on free-to-air television super late and its time, uh, its time slot would often get bumped around to the sure. point where it was very occasionally on at like one, two in the morning sometimes. Mm-hmm. The horny hour. And yeah, yeah. And I would never catch it regularly enough to and I mean luckily it wasn't like a serialized show in the sense that like storylines didn't often carry over from episode right. to episode but I always was intrigued when it came out and I remember thinking like this was really cool and I didn't know I was watching the finale when I watched the finale because oh, there yeah. was no indication on TV that it was the series final or anything like that and I remember just being utterly flawed as as throughout the show each of the main characters was just mercilessly killed and i was i remember like young me was losing my goddamn mind at this and when it ended in the way that it did i immediately started trying to find out holy shit when is the next episode what is going to happen from here and you know obviously we all know that there was no more um we got fucked and then I ended up picking it up on on DVD here and going back and watching it all and and legitimately having a really good time with with most of that show. And so when one when Ben Meckler started doing uh, yeah, little podcast, don't say his name out loud. Oh, sorry, sorry. Out loud. Uh, Men Men Beckler um, uh-huh. started doing little podcast. I was like, oh, this is this is for me. And then when I heard that there was a spin-off podcast, I was like, this is a psyop specifically targeted at me. <laughs> it's true. It's true. 
We knew we could get still, at least one person to listen. Yeah, I'm still not entirely unconvinced that that's not the case and that somehow in doing this recording, I am somehow like mm-hmm. not of my free will giving you like no. my credit card information. Yeah. And, Corey and, and I like, both know your banking passwords now. Fuck. And weirdly, I don't even know how this is part of it. It's also the singularity uh-huh. now. <laughs> yes. The, origi- so, the original like, title for the show was MK Paul Quest. <laughs> <laughs> Very good no. stuff, yeah. <laughs> Oh. Yeah, sorry, Paul. Uh, you'll soon realize you're actually stuck in the reboot world. I don't like this. With, it's you and with Sean, Sean Catherine. Catherine. I'm uncomfortable. And we have all your crypto. <laughs> oh, wait. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to have to stop making those jokes soon as because uh, all these crypto companies keep going bankrupt. You saying that broke like, the illusion today, because I have none. <laughs> literally today, oh, yeah. a big old crypto company went yeah, bankrupt. Yeah, they fucking did. That guy was stealing. And they... And they took the fucking, uh, they put in an announcement, and the Mercedes F1 team was like, yeah, we took their sponsorship off the car. Amazing. Hell yeah, Mercedes. And I'm like, that's so fucking funny. You shouldn't have had it in the first place. As a very quick aside, seeing Twitter burn down in real time has been very entertaining. Yeah, it's like having a folding chair for the burning of the Library of Alexandria. (laughs) (laughs) You have to stop bringing this back to the Alexandria Library, please. (laughs) I don't even think I was recording when we said that stuff earlier. (laughs) It was Dominated. famously 77 Fahrenheit when the <laughs> right. the <Of> skulls <laughs> were burned. <laughs> sure. It was it was a little it was like a perfectly modest temperature. It was a mild moderate burning. temperature. The burning point for books is actually a lot lower than uh for no, for scrolls is right. a lot lower than for books. Yeah, yeah. If, <laughs> if you right. like if you, the friction if of, you of just like room unfurling t- them too quickly it can often just make them explode. <laughs> if you pour room temperature water on a scroll it just fucking what explodes. happens if you pour monster juice Aussie lemonade on it? Uh. I'm pretty you sure it's like yeah, it's like an atom bomb, basically. I might die just yeah. from drinking this. You may. And like, what a way to go out, Dominic. You know? What's your history with Mortal Kombat? Sorry, I'm glad that was so concise. <laughs> We're only 43 uh, minutes dude, in. It's fine. This is the whole. This, this is, is the, this is the this is the show. Yeah, this is it. I love that I made no, a segue minute. about 30 minutes ago about <laughs> yeah. reading this comic and and. Lest we forget how good that segue was. Sure. Yeah, let, 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 let's run the clock and let's see if we can do it again. Neil, I'm, I'm <laughs> hoping that you can pull some kind of segue out of what I'm about to say. Mm-hmm. Um, so if not, we'll just talk aimlessly for another 25 minutes. Yeah, we'll, we'll get back there. Let's just keep going, you know? Yeah. It would help me a lot if the story you're about to tell ends in like a bluish green colored baby. Oh, okay. So. Let's, let's, let's give it a go. Um, uh so okay. he <laughs> starts talking Neil, in the audio. Neil, please, let's not turn this into a story about birth complications. Oh, no. The oh, audio. I wasn't going there. Jesus Christ. What I was going to say is that Dom starts talking and it's just the audio for Avatar Way of the Water. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Avatar's a good route to go down. Let's see if we can get there. <laughs> okay. Well, um, the thing is that. But you have to start at Mortal James Cameron. <laughs> Uh, a couple of years ago, I had a dream, and he <laughs> okay. didn't didn't have the cameras to film it yet, so he spent a lot of time building the special... No, okay. Um, yeah, Mortal right. Kombat is uh, fairly integral to my childhood. Um, I think Mortal Kombat 3 was like the big, the big, I don't know, game <laughs> that, right. that, we that grabbed base, me. We're talking base Mortal Kombat 3 or ultimate Mortal Kombat base, 3? Yeah, it was pretty okay. based, except for the um, striker. <laughs> Super striker, right. <laughs> that, sure. that wasn't very based. Um, yeah, I, I think the first time I encountered Mortal Kombat, it was either the 95 movie or it was Mortal Kombat 3 over at like this friend of a friend's house. Um, okay. And particularly with like Mortal Kombat 3, I was just like struck by like, I guess the general things that Mortal Kombat is, tends to be striking with. If that's a sentence, um, mm-hmm. it is on this show. It is <laughs> it is like the well, like I was really brought in by like the whole, uh, which I didn't even know at the time was like a big new departure, but like the real world setting of like the streets of Detroit or New York or whatever it is, um, right. being the background for like the arenas. Uh, I thought that was really cool, and like how um, there was just like this whole collection of really different dudes like there was the cyber ninjas there was cabal who's a sewer mutant or something and a cop of the opera as we learned in defenders of the realm yeah 
Um, and yeah, because everybody else has definitely also watched that. <laughs> I remember that. Um, <laughs> isolate, isolate that one. <laughs> All right. So, so Neil, what I'm going to want you to do in the edit is isolate every individual sentence anyone has said for the last 40 minutes. Just like we'll they're, they're all bangers. Um, yeah, so that, that was like a Captain Crunch woke up and said, oops, all bangers. <laughs> Uh, yeah, okay. I was really drawn in by that. And then obviously also the Mortal Kombat movie, which was just amazing. Yeah, I think it was kind of like the first thing to introduce me to like um, people of color being protagonists, like obviously yeah. Robert, Robin Show as nice. Liu Kang and um, Kari Hiroyuki Tanaga. T- wait, T- oh, Tagawa. 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 Tagawa as his um, as the main adversary. Of Shang yeah. Tsung, obviously. From it's Sabrina like, the Teenage Witch. Obviously, like, portraying his famous character, Shang Tsung, from the Teenage Witch series. That's how I say, but go on. it's the same. Sabrina the Teenage you know, Witch's it, legendary cousin. <laughs> DJ Sabrina the Teenage Witch. Hold on, DJ. she has a cousin. Fuck, what's the cousin's name? It doesn't matter. Legendary Shang cousin. Tsung. Dom, Amanda. Dom Sung. It's Amanda. Okay. okay. Um. Yeah, and that was. I guess it would more accurately be Amanda's legendary cousin, Sabrina the Teenage Witch. Depends on which show you're watching. I guess it depends on whose legend. Hey, is let's it anyway. stop interrupting Dom. Oh, okay. Now it's okay. Yeah, I did that. <laughs> Thanks, Corey. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, that was that was a huge feature of my childhood, and yeah. I, I remember renting that uh, video a lot. I remember one time in particular, my grandparents were babysitting me, and they brought over a choice between two VHS tapes and one was like the adventures of Sinbad. And the other one was Mortal Kombat. The, the animated one, the legend begins. The journey the begins. Journey the journey begins. begins. Oh, wow. And I, I oh, chose that one. Obviously I don't remember like any of it, but <laughs> like uh, that's where my head was at basically. Also on the topic of like doing childhood drawings, I also did that at my other grandparents place I drew uh, like a sort of a game accurate version of Sub Zero versus Goro. So I oh, had nice. like the ice versus like tornado, mini tornado things that he sent out. That's pretty rad. Um, I'm pretty sure my grandparents had like no idea what I was doing because I would often just draw like whatever. I would draw like Pokemon or something, and then they'd just be like, oh, that's great. <laughs> nice. Did they put it on the fridge? <laughs> no, I had like a whole fold, little like plastic folder of like um where my masterpieces were kept that's excellent uh yeah so it's it's great to see that we all had that collective unconscious urge to to draw a mortal combat mm. that's why I... go ahead oh good no you, yours are, you're responding to what he said i have a different topic so you go ahead well what i was gonna say was I, the reason i love hearing these stories from people is because everybody's got these long sort of dynamic histories with the franchise right. that has changed a lot over a long period of time and I'm like, I played a video game a bit like <laughs> once right. and then heard a lot of a podcast and then decided to make it a foundational <laughs> pillar of my entire identity to know only the dumb parts. Start somewhere. So I always enjoy I always enjoy hearing the more like foundational sort right. of like I grew up with the this stories. Fans. I always enjoy those more. Yeah, no, exactly. everyone. Everyone no. knows I don't mean that. Well, Everyone I've... knows <laughs> my stance is that if you like one Mortal Kombat thing, you're a Mortal Kombat fan. Mm. It's a gateway drug. Well, yeah. The best part of the the original 95 movie to me, originally ironically and then unironically, is the announcer randomly appearing and saying reptile. Reptile. It's it so fucking good. The best thing that's ever happened in cinema. It- I know what I'm you're a lot doing. easier. So I'm a good. lot easier to please, and it was the those were five hundred dollars sunglasses, asshole. Why? Yeah. They got me. Is that those are Celsius dollars. So Celsius dollars. Yeah. Jeez. And I, Paul, I know what you were doing. You were just setting me up for this. Sounds like this movie has a reptile dysfunction. Yes. I mean, look. If it's we if did it's it, baby. <laughs> If it's good enough for Skrillex, it's good enough for me, dude. You, you, Corey, you do know that that was on an official Mortal Kombat album, right? The reptile yeah, song, okay. yeah. All right, just making sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, Paul, I didn't saying, it, no, Paul saying a reptile dysfunction was on the original right. album. Yeah, it's on the yeah, new. Yeah. It's yeah. on the new. That's on no, Marshmallows I'm, album. <laughs> I'm playing it. I, I'm playing it a little bit sillier when I say that I had never done anything Mortal Kombat related before deciding to, to make it my entire life, um, my life's mission. Uh, I was I was familiar. I was a y- the youth when Skrillex was popping. I'm familiar. Mm-hmm. 
and like MK9 had just become a thing and everybody was like we live in a bold new world where dubstep and violence can finally <laughs> come finally. together in harmony finally finally yeah. finally yeah and which directly gave birth to the monk crumble remix yeah 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 exactly yeah we had tried to get skrillex on that but his rates are crazy <laughs> <laughs> not as crazy you'd think but still pretty out of our budget um, it's a lot cheaper to just find a, a loop on some random <laughs> sample focus website sound bible, not sound bible um soundtrack loops any of those royalty free Fiverr. loop yeah. and then just record drunken lyrics over it yeah dominic you're a big uh i know i think everyone here probably is dominic you've been really digging action movies lately especially yes was was mortal Kombat like your gateway to like martial arts cinema as well uh yeah i was gonna actually mention that but like we've, we've been running pretty over time for the intro but like um Who cares? that's yeah, right we're no, not recording seriously. yet this is just the the pre-podcast this is just talk. a chat you know, yeah, I'll hit record in a few minutes here. Let's yeah, just yeah. get through let's, this. Uh, let's run the wheel of slurs quickly. And uh... <laughs> okay, we're not going to do that. <laughs> no, no, I was yeah, no, I was going to say like as I said before, it was like my probably my intro to like uh, you know Asian leads in a movie, and I think mm. that really warmed me up for like um, Jackie Chan starring in Rush Hour, which was like a huge impact on me. Um, sure, Corey, famously a big fan of the blooper reel. Love that blooper reel, you know. That's true. I actually got to tell my roommates that the other day. Uh, really quick, I walked into my roommate's room the other day, and they were just sitting there, just casually watching Rush Hour Two. <laughs> I'm I'm working my way up to it. Like I know th- like it's a thing to do in your life, and it is. But I was just like, huh? You don't, yeah, you don't expect to see that oh, in 2022. The- the he ain't gonna be in Russia with three blooper is an all timer. That one's great, but I also love the it, the Phil so fish thing. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> you can't say it. Kafil fish. Yeah, I don't know. I must have said this on the pod, but um, there was a point where I was a kid where I was watching that blooper reel literally every day before. That's school. how I know about it. That's why I brought it up. Like, yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, I was like, surely I must have mentioned, it, but like every, every day. day. Every day. It's like there was a period of time in my life yeah. where I watched Aliens like once a week for like four or five months. Yeah, Corey, you said you that you were like sort of a random, you like just randomly decided to opt into being a Mortal Kombat fan. But I somehow think that watching the blipper reel for Rush Hour 2 <laughs> every day like makes you an automatic Mortal Kombat fan somehow. Yeah. yeah. It was a gimme. Like, yeah, like it was like honorary membership. It was like how how Mortal Kombat led Dominic to Rush Hour. It had the reverse effect on you. Yeah. Anyway, so that's a nice segue. Uh, let's keep that action going. <laughs> but yeah, like um, that really like led me into like weird uh, uh, action movies as a kid. I would watch like the, all these like weird um, movies that were about like fourteen year old white kids that are like learning mm-hmm. martial arts. Like, like sidekicks, yeah, side yeah, kicks. like sidekicks starring Chuck Norris and Mako, <laughs> or Three Ninjas Return to the Three I, Ninjas, I, I, the I theme the park Mountain. with your yeah, High Noon yeah. and Mega Man with Hulk Hogan, which like actually kicks ass in thinking about it because there was that, like that <laughs> that girl that had like the crooked playing cards that were like ninja stars. That's fucking dope, man. That sounds badass. Three Ninjas podcast win. And then, oh, let's do it. I I love those movies. We just do them on a loop. Um, sure. And then also review the Super Nintendo game, which I discovered was a yeah. thing recently. And then a special episode on Surf Ninjas. Oh, Surf Ninjas. That was like, okay, <laughs> yeah. we, we have to do this because I have like thoughts on that and a whole history of it. <laughs> Finally, um, someone else who has thoughts on Surf Ninjas. I knew there was I a reason to refer like, I saw it. I saw it randomly. It was on daytime TV and I was like, this seems pretty cool. And it's like a guy, like a little kid playing like. His game nin- gear can it, see the future. Game gear can, can play with Fuck. reality. It's crazy. Crazy. He had the TV tuner or something. No, he had the Surf now Ninjas game in his game power. gear. Damn. Get it? Oh, I was talking um, over you. You say now you're playing with power. That's a I good did, one. Which is the, the classic Sega Game Gear phrase <laughs> that, you know, you know what you love it. I had MK1 on Game Gear. <laughs> you, Suzuki, woke up one day in a cold sweat and he like said, he does every now morning. you're playing with power. So, yeah, <laughs> you, you <laughs> can say that, like, the <laughs> moral... You, Suzuki, so sweaty all the time. He's just... <laughs> dripping with sweat pouring it in directly into a sega saturn when he was <laughs> dominic we are oh, yeah. doing multi-track recording you can just bulldoze he, he rings out and chop him out anyway, I, was just gonna, I was just gonna say that like um labeled oh. shenmue 4 can i just keep talking about Paul and like <laughs> yeah yeah i'm gonna chop them both out don't worry 
Uh, this this <laughs> I'm sorry. this release is going to be like a Queen sound, like a song where it's just multi tracks gonna... and multi track guitars layered over. It's each going other. to take me several months to edit this. Don't edit this, Neil. I probably won't. Um, <laughs> yeah. Anyway, I was going to say so. In light of that, I think Mortal Kombat has had a bit of a stranglehold over my childhood, much like uh, a baby might be strangled and then kind of turned wow. blue. Oh my god! Perfect yes. execution. No notes. We're back. Which brings us to Babality. Mortal Kombat, the Baraka one shot story titled Babality. I said that 27 minutes now, ago. Now, before we start talking about it, no. Let's, let's, let's go. <laughs> what is, what nope, is your history with a... babies, everyone? <laughs> What's everyone's history? You know what? We didn't get Corey's... Corey, what did you think of this comic book? Real quick. One word. Two, one one word. <laughs> Can we go one word, actually? <laughs> he, could go, he could go one word. I'll do you one better and do one sound. Okay. Eh. There it eh. is. Eh. Is that yours? Eh. Eh. All right. So... <laughs> here's my opinion on this comic book who asked you know there's a lot of like cultural discourse on if comic books graphic novels etc are like you know there's a lot of like snobs out there who are like that's not real literature that's not real like that's not like high art mm. right i have three uh rebuttals to that statement three buttles. and they are i have three buttles to that statement uh, i like big buttles Watchmen. i can't lie please don't lie on this podcast Watchmen mm. by alan moore and dave gibbons Akira by Katsuhiro Otomo mm-hmm. and Baraka <laughs> by Charles Marshall. <laughs> the big three. <laughs> sort of famously. Everybody kind of knows that. This is the best one of these we've read. And Hol- it's, it's Pardon? Not, this is the best one of these that we've read, That I, in my opinion. Did you read one where stuff happens? Because I oh, sure didn't. Um, no, I've read very few of these where stuff happens, Corey. That's kind of the problem with the whole series. I Yes, as, as discussed previously. <laughs> But some stuff happens in this one. Uh, now, that doesn't mean it's actually good, but I liked it. <laughs> Let's just be it clear. Feels, there are a lot of words. It's good in Celsius. Yeah. yeah right. it's, it feels very much like a side right. story. It does. And I think it's the of the side stories we've gotten, like between like weird backup stories in the back of the Battle Wave comics or the Special Forces series or the other one shots, this is the strongest amongst those. Mm-hmm. It it is the most complete story that makes the most sense, even though for all the words on the page, there's still a lot of shit that doesn't make yeah. sense, right? But uh, I had heard that this was pretty good, and I, I've said before, this is the first of these that I ever got, and I plucked it out of a dollar bin at a comic book store, like probably twenty years ago. Huh. It had been like that long since I've read it, um, but I remember liking it okay, and then thinking like, well, if this if they made the Baraka issue good, then the other comic issues must be like really good, because who the fuck cares about Baraka? was not expecting this to be one of the stronger issues of this series overall a series where you totally lose the concept that baraka like talks like a caveman and says his own name to introduce himself because he's dumb (laughs) when everyone in the comic book series does that all the time and is always talking about themselves in third person yeah I, i start to uh to see what you you would talk about with the constant name dropping of the characters in this. Yeah, it makes Baraka just seem like he's talking normal yeah. in this universe. Like everyone's the rock, but... referring to themselves in the third person. Except for like 100%. one sentence, yeah. and that's the bottom which line. I'll get to later. But like there is one <laughs> sentence where he's like really kind of Shakespeareanly florid with his language. Yeah, we got to get to that. All right. I'm going to do a fast, fast Neil Nook here. Just list the credits. So nobody fucking interrupt me. Welcome to the Neil Nook. This book was written by Charles Marshall, of course. Pencils. The voice of Mario. <laughs> <laughs> nobody interrupt me. It lasted a long time. Nobody interrupt me for an hour. <laughs> you didn't say for how long to not interrupt you. I gave you a good. <laughs> What? A couple of seconds? <laughs> Jesus Christ. All right. I'm fine. <laughs> Maybe interrupt me. End of podcast. Just a, a quick side note. I love that we're, we're two hours past the initial agreed upon starting of the recording time. Yeah. <laughs> and we're, Hope you guys kept we're, your day clear. And we're at the intro. Let's go. All right. Uh, yeah, do, actually, does anybody have a hard out time we need to be done Absolutely at? We not. That we do that. Ideally today. <laughs> yeah. All right. We'll, we'll try to stick to that. 
Uh, written by Charles Marshall, pencils by Vinton T. Hook. Uh, Abraham Madison and Mark Brill did the inks. Carrie Spiegel did the lettering. I believe that's a new letterer, and she uh, they do a fine job. Mark Panicia as editor and Dan Mark Shaheen. Mark Panicia. As, Thanks, Mark. As the other editor. Can we isolate that? Mark Panicia. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Mark Panicia. Yeah, well, well, Wait. And I'll go back and I'll dub that into all the episodes where I say his name. Everybody's favorite Mortal Kombat character, Mark Panicia. As if for the Neil Hook. Are we corny, corner, corny, <laughs> cornering? <laughs> corby. Yeah, let's let's <laughs> do a corny corner. corner. <laughs> Desperately off the rails. So what's the deal with? Okay, that's <laughs> enough of that. Um, <laughs> Corey, so, mate, what happens? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm getting there. Hang on. Okay. I don't, I don't know, know how you to fuck spiders, are we? <laughs> that one was live. Fucking I can tell. Who's old mate? Yeah. <laughs> Who is old mate? Uh, he's Baraka, and uh, he, Bazzy. Uh, Bazza. Actually, he actually Bazza. he actually isn't here. He actually isn't here. Very shops. Uh, we <laughs> we start with the Blue Man Group, and uh, uh-huh. they're being murdered to death by a variety of zombies and bad bad men who are uh, undead on account of Scorpion's possession of the Death Stone yeah, and man. various Shao Kahn uh, badnesses. And they've got an infant child. Um, I guess that's sort of an oxymoron. Um, they've got an infant. <laughs> an who instant child. Is, they've got one right. of those. Uh, you put it in a cup of water and yeah, you come back like the cup, next day and it's way bigger. It's like cup noodles. Just yeah. a child well, right away. He uses it. He pulls uh, his sweat onto the child. And... <laughs> right. And then he three... calls it Shenmue 5 or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> they've got three Rubik's Cubes in a trench coat. Um <laughs> I don't even know what that means. <laughs> <laughs> well, babies are quite small, yeah? Uh, five Sega Dreamcasts stacked on top of each other wearing a trench coat. Name trying Yusuzuki. to watch an R-rated movie. Yeah. <laughs> Yu Suzuki is trying to watch The Godfather. Trying to get tickets coat. to Mortal Kombat because um, it's rated PG-13. Yeah, and that's there's 13 Yu Suzuki's in a trench coat and they're all sweating. <laughs> and so... Uh. <laughs> and so... Okay, so uh, there's this guy who's being like systematically hunted by Shao Kahn's undead army because they've got no use for mutants anymore. Um, right. And so this person with their dying breaths is sort of like, hey, take care of this baby. And Baraka's like, me no baby. Um, <laughs> so he he goes through a walk in a forest that uh, really just sort of tears him apart. Yeah. Really just sort of like roasts him pretty hard. Just roasts the shit out of him. But like in a lot of weird, like particularly 90s ways of like, oh, I can't. Wow, a man with a child. What are you? Some kind yeah. of woman. If this, if like, this was written today, a, the forest would be questioning his like Sigma mindset or some shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, right. they're, they're wondering these, if he's grinding hard enough. These trees would absolutely be calling him a beta. Yeah. yeah. So uh, he gets roasted by some Welcome trees. Welcome to the Joe Rogan forest. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and then he's like, "Fuck you, trees! I'll kick your ass!" And, and they uh, shut the fuck so up. He's off. <laughs> yeah. And they do. They do famously shut the fuck up. Well, they remember what Kung Lao did to him back in uh, Goro, Prince of Pain. Yeah, he also just told them that, to shut that the fuck one up. page, he page five, one to pieces. That is like a complete short story within this comic book <laughs> of just Barack yeah. walking through them talking shit, him retracting the blade, and them shutting up. It's fantastic. Yeah, so he's like, okay, I gotta figure out what to do with this kid. Um, and then what if instead of figuring out what to do with this kid, there was a mysterious shadow man? <laughs> uh, who, who is this shadow man? That shadow man is none other than Noob Cybot. And I will say that this is a cool approach to drawing him in a comic book where he's just like constant silhouette mode. I did enjoy yeah. that. But um, Noob Cybot's like, hey man, uh, big news. This kid that you're trying to save the life of because they're important, they're important. And he's like, yeah. Uh, can you tell me why? And Noob Sabat's like, absolutely not. What we do need to do is uh, kick Scorpion's ass because he's uh, king of Shao Kahn's army of undead souls. Yep. Um, then they proceed to do that. Yeah, that because Scorpion steals the baby. He, yeah, I guess I sort of glossed over maybe the crucial part. Uh-huh. Um, sort of a ch- uh, choose your own adventure, Mad Lib, fill in the blank kind of situation. I like uh, sort is of it? having a lot of audience sort of interactivity in the Corey Corner. It's never been that I forget to say something. It's, <laughs> it's always just, no one's corrected you. Well, it's about getting you know 
the 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 little guy, the regular right. human man involved. Yeah, because it's like uh, it's like if Michael Jordan invites you to play pick up basketball and he proceeds to dunk it so hard into your head that your skull turns to dust it's like look it was cool that he invited you because you're just a regular guy but he's still michael jordan yeah i i remember when that happened to me and it was very embarrassing he's still gonna oh, dunk your about. head into dust oh boy see like it's not like it's not his fault that he did that because he's michael jordan you had to anticipate that he wasn't going to turn it off just because you're a regular guy and not Michael Jordan. And no, uh, it's I don't know. It's like no, it's I get like, it. It's, that tracks. Yeah. It's like that dream where you have where your teeth are falling out, but in this one, Michael Jordan invites you to play basketball with him and says, "I'm going to dunk you to dust." It's like a collective does. experience <laughs> that we all know. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, sure. I mean, like, who hasn't it, been to a wedding? It means, like, if you are into, like, dream analysis, like, it means you're going to come into some money soon. I don't like doing dream analysis because I find Minecraft videos boring. Also, <laughs> um... <laughs> <What>? <laughs> <laughs> the famous Minecraft YouTuber dream. Um, <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> also, Did you just a like <laughs> artificial intelligence generate that sentence? Co- Corey's operating at a level that I I'm like afraid of right now. <laughs> well, what I was gonna say was my favorite part when you go to a wedding during the vows is when they say that like I'll love you like till death do us part in 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 sickness and health whether your skull has been turned to dust by Michael Jordan or not. <laughs> Everybody gets really weepy during that. Yeah, part. and then there's like, does anyone object? And then Michael Jordan walks in. <laughs> he said, "Did somebody say b-ball?" <laughs> well, he he pounds on the glass like in The Graduate. <laughs> Did someone say, "Dunk your fucking head to dust"? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ! Did somebody say Michael Jordan? No, nobody said no, that. Actually, <laughs> get married here. <laughs> It's not always about you, Michael. Wait, Jesus he, Christ. He goes out and specifically finds wedding ceremonies involving other people named Michael Jordan <laughs> just to object when they say his name because it wasn't about him and then challenges him to a basketball. This is why couple. Michael B. Jordan changed his name to Michael B. Jordan. Yes. Yeah. He, it does sound like his some, wedding was some Michael ruined. Jordan shit he would the do. couple change like are in the middle of the first dance and Michael Jordan comes in and says, I think you'll find this is the last dance, and then dunks them both into <laughs> death. <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> Damn. Fuck, that was really good, man. That was good. Um, <laughs> and somewhere in there, uh the baby is safe. Yes. The baby makes that. Oh, yeah. is it? That's what that's what this comic book is about. The baby. It, I don't know that the baby is so much saved as Noob Saibot then just yeah. takes the baby, leaving Baraka. Much sad like Neil at yeah, an Indian airport, say, it's like... kind of just disappeared for a while. <laughs> yeah, his, his mother is Noob's very worried about it. Taking the baby to a series it. of ATMs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess we're leaving that India story in <laughs> for context. Mortal Kombat context. My mom was worried. Oh, I would hope. It would be weirder if you were like, my mom didn't give a fuck, dude. I feel bad now because I'm laughing and you're, as you're saying, my mom was worried. Like, he's fine. You're talking to him know, right now. Like, it, nothing bad happened. God. Yeah, I made it out. I made it out okay. Anyway, uh, that is the Corey Corner. And All right. I love this concise, as cons- concise Corey Corner. <laughs> I'm lucky you played the, the quick right. sound drop at the start of that to let people know that it was going to be That's a sped up version. That's one of the short versions. ones. Oh. We yeah. gotta shave all the seconds off of this bad boy that we can. Uh, I disagree. Th- I think Neil, you save time by keeping all the good stuff in. All right. Uh, now let's go over to 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 Dom's den so that you can give us a recap on the, and then we'll go over to Paul's patio and you can do the same thing. We're gonna. Get but I had a palace recaps. at one point. When have I been downgraded to a patio? <laughs> well, the patio uh, is part of the palace. You're downgraded to a patio about an oh, hour fuck. ago. <laughs> I was gonna say Paul. That's my. F- I was gonna say Paul's parlor because I thought that was a good one. That's mm. better. Paul, you can have a parlor. Paul's Parlardio is my favorite Beastie Boys album. Anyway, um, Paul's Pilates Studio. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> Paul Audi Studio. Paul's Paul Paul. Trading Pilates Studio. Um, Paul Audis. That's Paul. just it's just called Paul. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's Paul's That's Paul what I'm doing. That's Paul my fullback plan. Let's talk about this comic book. What is a comic book? <laughs> no, before, let's talk about this comic book. Before we start. I just don't Pre- know what those are. Pretty simple story. You hit all the major beats, Corey. I don't think we learn anything new in this about, like, we see Baraka, we see the team up between him and Katana. 
we talk about that for a little bit because that's obviously quite a canon breaking uh Mm. setup not only can we we are we doing are we doing a rough sort of like start to finish thing or are we just kind of going to bounce around i feel like we already did that with Corey's. Uh. Corner. Yeah, let's bounce. Let's bounce around. Cool. Unless you got something earlier. Just like than Michael that. Jordan, oh, the, the one Corey's <laughs> extensively renovated corner. The one thing, the one thing <laughs> I was going to ask. So it starts off with uh, this sort of notion saying that the mutants have always been the land's most hearty race. So I'm assuming that refers right. to Outworld. They're, ch- they're chunky like a soup. Yes. Know? Yes. Um, yes. Of course. Yes. Right. <laughs> Um, so, like, are these? Are we supposed to think that these are the, I guess, original? I think the implication is that they're like the indigenous race of our. Race world? Of our yeah. World. Okay. Yeah, I don't have an answer because they call the Tarkatans mutants in this. They're like a but sort it, of it, an offshoot of mutant. They're obviously different because the regular yeah. mutants are like blue, right. and obviously the baby, the titular baby of Babality, is blue. I don't think we've actually set right. that up enough. Is that? The focus of the story is that there's a blue child who can be the savior of Outworld and who can somehow take down Shao Kahn, uh, which yeah. is never explained as to why. No. In my note, that's why Scorpion wants the. Yeah, baby. in my notes, I've got what that baby do though, because they never explain it. Yeah, it's. I don't think it's, it's what very it much has done. It's what it what it. It's will very do. much the Mandalorian uh, ripped this off with the whole Baby Yoda thing. a hundred percent the Mandalorian ripped it's this off. Like, it's, yeah. it's blatant. Totally, it is not. It is not at all Lone Wolf and Cub inspired. No, no, no. And neither is the Mandalorian. No. I have a tab open on my browser that says "Fake Burger King leaves customers asking questions." <laughs> Parentheses updated. Neil, we've already gone so off track with this. Yeah, we're not going to talk about that now. I'm just, we're just going to tease. That. Also, they say send it to you later. That's the post credit sequence. <laughs> they do give the child's name. Yeah. They do give they the do, name of the wait, child. They give it's it a like, name. Yeah, it starts with that, an in. Narnia? Right? Narnia? Narnia. Narnia. But, Narnia. Yeah, like, the Chronicles yeah. of Narnia. Yes, but without the R. Everybody's Nanya. Yeah, it's like it's like an Australian saying Narnia instead yeah. of an American. It's me yeah. daughter Nanya. Yeah. What's oh, uh What's going to happen to Shao Kahn if this if this baby survives? Who not, can say? not good. Uh, Nanya business. Oh, oh shit! shit. No, that... Literally, Nanya business will occur. Can we get that gunshot drop? A hundred percent. I deserve it. <laughs> there we go. Pause. Yeah, I don't understand this. Um, who these people mm. are? The we've never seen blue people in any of the except for Sub Zero in any of the other comic books. They, I guess, blue people are Asia. I, do they? Ref- I can't. Um. I don't remember if they call the Tarkatans nomads or mutants in this. I believe they call them mutants. They he is like a Baraka kind of mutant. mutant. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so it's just like a general term for everyone who lives in Outworld is a mutant, mm-hmm. except for the Edenians. Yeah. I guess. Add because... that one to the Wheel of Slurs, mutants. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but they also take pains to establish that Barack is not like other girls in that like he's sort of odd even within he's an enigma wrapped in a culture. riddle wrapped in a vest he's exactly like <laughs> that so i don't really i think it's like it's being needlessly ambiguous but you could just say like yeah they're all this is just you know they lived in that world and brock is one of them but he's kind of a weirdo yeah because it kind of sure. starts with this like blue mutant who you assume is maybe a parent of the child or a guardian of the child running away from these uh undead army folks and then yeah. obviously i guess the head shape is the same yeah and the ears kind of look similar now that i look at it it's just that the coloring yeah. is different maybe it was a mistake maybe they weren't supposed to be blue <laughs> maybe baraka was supposed to be blue oh shit. blue raka there it is people are saying this <laughs> people are always saying this people are saying this so, so okay true. so before we get to the team up thing i do want to talk about the living forest yes. as we see it in here because We've seen the living forest in other. Wait, can we? Can uh, wait, can we just quickly? I th- we really need to like concrete the fact that this blue mutant is carrying the child. Mm-hmm. He doesn't make it, so he gives the child to Baraka to protect yeah. because the child is very important and is going to be the future of Outworld. And it sets yeah. up this like right. lone wolf and cub, Wolverine. Yeah, kind of like uh, semi unwilling Baraka has to yeah. take this child on this journey. Kind of story and of him. Jack and Daxter. Yeah, it's a t- tale as old as time. 
Um, Banjo Kazooie. That's like <laughs> the setup, and then now we can keep going. So walking through the living forest, which we've seen, we learned in the Katana and Molina one shot um, that the before Shao Kahn took over Outworld, the Laughing Forest was known as the Living Forest. Huh. And they were all happy and smiling and shit. So to see like how far they've fallen to the point where they're like attacking Baraka's masculinity because they, <laughs> I don't know, they just like feel self-conscious about their own. I have perhaps. a note here. What, did you mean that the other way around? Whereas the, the living forest used to be the laughing forest? Yeah, the living forest used to be the laughing gotcha. forest. I, what, what, so whatever I said, that's what I meant. What Neil is saying is that the forest got red pilled. <laughs> Uh, I literally have a note yeah, here that just says like toxic masky forestry, <laughs> toxic agriculture. <laughs> it's it like it got really into like uh, mixed martial arts, and then it kind of all went downhill from there. My, my <laughs> like my favorite is just how specifically targeted their abuse is. <laughs> it's just like, yeah. like oh uh, no, the, 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 it is the, Mother Baraka. <laughs> <laughs> you'd have a husband next time you're, yeah. you're like what the right. fuck these trees are like again, probably like a thousand years old or something <laughs> they're getting hung up on gender I just, stereotypes i feel like most of the things that they're saying if they were still the laughing forest mm. they could say the same things but the context would be yeah. different they would be like compliments or positive statements about a man a single father and his yeah, child, their eyes are like right? definitely not happy because it's like it's just it's all in the face because saying maybe he will settle down and take a husband they mean it as a christian but if they're saying it with like a smile on their face like they're being supportive just a whole different vibe so i i guess what i'm saying is the art is very effective here. perhaps he can run shao khan's nursery yeah i mean that like none of the things they're saying are like outright i insults. mean it is not ugly enough to be his own is an interesting one referring to the child that's just that's just complimenting the looks of the baby <laughs> even that's kind of nice no i'm alone on Possibly. this got really got really quiet there <laughs> well it also got really quiet to when edit. <laughs> it got really quiet when he uh i'm gonna isolate the blade. Well, I'm, too, I'm gonna isolate all of these things so thank you for the we're gonna release four podcasts <laughs> and let's move yeah. on no it also got really so quiet can, when he, uh, we got to talk about the like the, the whole alliance between like katana and sub-zero yeah there's, yeah, there's several additional comic book issues entirely dedicated to how that didn't really work out. I was going to say, well. they touched on that very briefly here. They kind of just mentioned it as being a, a banding together on a desperate mission. Right. They also talk about the fact they that uh, Baraka is like a, a mystery and enigma to his like own kind. They don't know whether he works for Shao Kahn or works for himself. Right. And then they kind of <laughs> just say, oh no, he's part of this alliance with Katana and Sub-Zero. <laughs> so they... But they, they that group does fucking, they do nothing mm. ever. They, they, they stand around, they're like, together we will defeat Shao Kahn, and then Baraka and Sub-Zero get in a fight because they don't trust each other, and then we move on to some other characters. Like, they're in, like, every issue of Battle Wave doing absolutely fucking nothing. Yeah, the reason people don't so really I don't know, know about what the plan is. their plan is because their, like, social media team is really in a disarray. Well, right. they got they got impersonated by somebody who bought Twitter blue. <laughs> they did, yeah. Some people got some blue check marks and pretended they to be didn't. Them yeah, they didn't Twitter include parody in their um... reptile bought Twitter blue. Sub Zero is like, nah, fuck you. This episode's not going to come out in like for four weeks. Twitter and by that might time, be dead by the there time just this won't episode be... comes out. These jokes are instantly dated because there will be no Twitter in four weeks. Well, you know, these these Twitter it's an important historical is document. The homophobia of the living yeah. forest. <laughs> Can I get a gunshot, please? <laughs> Just the gunshot? I'll Just, edit it in post. We're killing homophobia, folks. <laughs> we did it. <laughs> We've solved Finally. it. Finally. I do object, though, to uh, Reptile's portrayal here. It's just constantly messing up. Like, he gets caught. He snitches yeah. him out. Like, what's he doing? Yeah, he's the worst in this comic book. Series. They took the best character and made him the shittiest character in these comics. Uh, the disrespect. Like, the jump cut to him, reptile. you know, encased in ice. Yeah. He fucking sucks yeah. in this. It's the opposite of conquest in regards to reptile. Oh, my boy. <sighs> anyway, I wish I could tell you more about the alliance, but they just don't fucking do anything. Like they just don't. There's no storyline. They attempt like, to overthrow Shao Kahn basically in conversation only, and then don't succeed in doing so because they get too busy bickering with each other every single mm. time. So it was, I guess, interesting to see them finally take some action where they're like Sub Zero, go kill Scorpion. And Barack is like, no, I want to do it. And they're like, you can't. And he's like, well, I'm out of here. Yeah. Well, the thing that they get like, out of Reptile is that he tells them that the Emperor's scheme involves Scorpion and this mysterious gemstone 
that he has used to wake right. the dead and and make his undead army. Yeah, the Death Stone. We talk about the fact that Katana says to Sub Zero, "You must seek out the one called Scorpion." Like, I'm pretty sure Sub Zero knows <laughs> who Scorpion is at this point. <laughs> no, oh, that's actually that's the one thing we can't talk about. Sorry. Oh, okay. Can we edit? <laughs> they, Wait, can we, we get a bit no. of silence? <laughs> I guess we can talk about it one more time. All right, we'll talk about it. Yeah, because Scorpion and Sub Zero have met several times in this, and um, this is this is allegedly the the Bihan uh, Sub Zero. Mm. Like they haven't named him that, but this is like still this is the same Sub Zero as Mortal Kombat One. I mean, at this point, this so. is I think it's just a byproduct of the way these books are written generally, which is a fixation on saying character names as frequently as humanly it, possible. It has to be that. So because this I think what she meant is like you you need to go get him. Yeah. But the way they want to write it in like their flowery fantasy it speak makes it come across as like, like she's... Uh, uh, yes, the the demon ninja scorpion. He's got many sort of abilities and, and varnishes. Literally the you next panel. See- well, after she says, you know, you must seek out the one called Scorpion Ninja, talking to Sub Zero, she then says to Baraka, "He stopped Scorpion once before, Baraka." <laughs> like, so oh, yeah, it, yeah. yeah, it's clear that it's it, this is just a the restraint, some sort of the restraint Charles Marshall showed with that by not saying Sub Zero stopped Scorpion <laughs> yeah. once. I'm before surprised Baraka. that that wasn't like an editor's sense. note by Mark that right. Scorpion has met Sub Zero before. Dash dash Mark. <laughs> Well, don't worry, Mark. Mark well, he only gets a he, he only gets a certain number per yeah. issue. Well, don't worry. When Noob Cybot shows up, he does start a sentence by saying his own name. <laughs> so good. Noob Cybot has watched for long enough. It's true. People have been saying that. I do like this characterization of Baraka. I'm gonna just be plain here. I don't know a shit ton about Baraka. Mm-hmm. Does anybody? He's an enigma, man. Yeah. I, yeah, I guess. So they're pretty true to the character there. But, like, he's a big part of Mortal Kombat 11, or at least Aftermath, right? Uh, well, like, I've never played that. <laughs> he's, got, he's got speaking lines and stuff, but I don't think I could really tell you. Does he? Yes. Yeah, that's crazy. Where he, like, like falls in the canon. Paul, can you step in here? Do you have any uh, I don't current Baraka oh, knowledge? Oh, God. I don't remember. So, I've played Aftermath not that long ago, but a lot of the uh, story element has it's kind of come and gone from my brain. The, the stuff I remember most right. is the the Shang Tsung, Liu Kang stuff. Um, yeah. No, he was definitely... The Baraka stuff just like slides yeah, out your ears. They kind of just use him as a bit of like, a, you know, you're a kind of general of your Plot people lubricant. character sort of thing. Like he seems to, you know, lead a group of Tarkatans, whether that's right. a formally agreed upon thing or not. It, it's hard to no for sure i'd say he's more like a, like a ronin or like a masterless ronin kind of type in keeping with the um whole uh lone wolf and cub situation yeah they're, in this comment saying for sure. he's a yeah. mystery to his own people and he kind of is like this uh lone warrior type who just is right. indiscriminate a lone wolf, in, if you will. <laughs> a lone wolf. <laughs> he's like a he's right. like a kind and- of wolf lo- he's like a dog like animalistic uh-huh. creature um, who but there's is a, but sort if there was in, only individual, individual. there was only one of them i wish that there yeah. was a better way by, to by other describe rules. that but um alas yeah. there isn't what i'm getting at is i think i like this characterization of baraka better than anything i've seen in the in anything else with the exception of i guess it got a just mortal Kombat rebirth where he's a psychotic plastic surgeon who killed a patient by accident became obsessed with murder as you do everybody's favorite i think that the thing that this i think the thing that this comic gets right and that is kind of consistent with the law which is like one of the few things consistent with the law is that baraka is (laughs) generally uh, just a guy who wants something to fight for that's bigger than himself which is usually in the games that's because shao khan like gave him a purpose to do something but in these comics it's that he is on the opposite of that and now he's in like rebellion against Shao Kahn because of his mistreatment against the mutants and then he finds his yeah. baby which is like something again to connect to that's bigger than himself which is I think the actual like emotional core of this comic as sort of yeah. minor as that is um, mm-hmm. I think that's why it's so kind of emotionally involving the most emotionally involving for Baraka in all of his lore, I think, which isn't saying a yeah. lot, but it is certainly like that's it's something like he he thing. has a purpose. Yeah. He's given a purpose. This is the most that has been put on any character in any of these comics, <laughs> even like the the Katana Molina one shot where 
Katana finally learns all about, you know, Idenia and Melina and all the horrible shit that Shao Kahn did. Shao Kahn then erases her memory at the end of it and it's all gone. So it doesn't I'm, affect her character yeah. at all. I'm so cynical about these books that I heard somebody describe something as the emotional core of this issue and I had to stifle <laughs> just laughing completely out loud because I'm like, oh, these don't have those. Like, but this one kind of has a little bit of it. That's what makes yeah, it better. I wouldn't, I wouldn't even say that he point. has like a an arc or anything as such, but there's he's at least I did say, motivated. I did like... Yeah, I did say for Baraka as like, and explain right. it to that. I'm saying, yeah, I'm saying he, this is the first time we've had a character in these comic books that has, uh, that has, it has a purpose that is beyond. Just, we have to smash these action figures together, right? Yeah, that is, it's not like a. They're not character traits. It's like actual character. He's not just like the dude with the spikes in his arms. So that's what we see him doing all the time, like we do with the rest of the characters. Like he actually has. Yeah. Some uh, the shallowest of depth to him. Yeah, I mean, he has a moment. He fights and fails. He, you know, he asks for help when he normally wouldn't. Like, there's some things happen. Yeah, and just on his characterization, like he, he at the beginning he talks basically like a Frankenstein kind of dude. Where he's like, Baraka, want to be strong? Want to be strong? I will kill." <laughs> And then Baraka, no, take baby. in this like frame where he's talking to Kung Lao and Katana, he's like, "Get away, spineless curs!" <laughs> That's a fantastic. <laughs> it's just shot, like really Shakespearean. Baraka and mostly talks like. Have you guys seen the video of the gorilla doing sign language asking for an orange? <laughs> <laughs> and the the words that it like the sentences that it's forming. What are the sentences it's forming? Uh, okay, so this, it's give orange me, give eat orange me, give orange me, give eat orange me, eat orange, give me, eat orange, give me, give orange, give me, eat orange me, eat orange, give me. Why they call oven when of in hot food of oh, oven. Have you ever had a dream <laughs> where when you... No. Yeah. <laughs> We have to stop because this is going to end up in a car too fast news bit, which is only going to exist for like the people on this call and no one else. Um, that really wants anyway. Me. Anyway, no, I was going to say I, I'm, Paul, I'm really uh, tempted now to go through and and remove all of Baraka's dialogue from his uh, dialogue boxes and just put eat orange one orange please give orange you know <laughs> give, me, give me orange see now this you, plays out if, if you just else's baby dialogue, you exactly end with an orange that would actually work <laughs> i thought you were on to something i forget the the title of it but there was that that pretty famous gi joe comic that snake eyes comic where there's just no dialogue in it at mm. all and i was like you know what if you took baraka's dialogue out of this and he was like a silent protagonist like a just like a a like lone a, wolf and cub sort of situation. Well, he, but he speaks. Yeah. No, I, yeah, I just <laughs> wanted to keep drawing that parallel. Keep drawing that parallel. Possible. I think that could be actually be an interesting story if we just never hear from Baraka, even like take out Charles Marshall's like description of what's going on. I think you, there might be. Something. I think the art is strong enough oh. to kind of, you know, pretty much yeah. communicate exactly what's going this, on here. This is some of the best art that we've seen in these in a long time. The I colors actually, are a little I bit... also thought that it's really good art. I will say that. Yeah. The like shading the... on people's faces, the lighting is is really cool. Particularly the panel yeah. where Scorpion is revealed with the moon in the background and like that sort of purpley mauve color in the background is is yeah, really good. There's like two moons. It is. That's probably the best coloring too. I I noticed a few of these pages it seems a little mm -hmm. muted versus what they normally do. Um still works pretty well. I do well. really like and I on love the following a, page. I think a purple Yeah, the purple outworld is so, is classic. Yeah. You got to have a purple yeah. outworld. I really like as well on the next page after that one with the scorpion shot um just the image of Baraka kind of jumping out towards you but on yeah. the entirely white like yes. no fr like yeah, no backdrop. It's really um it's really stark and it really effective. As soon as I saw that, I was like, I might make that the thumbnail art for the episode. Yeah, it's pretty um, cool. Just um, jumping back as well to like the panel that's after the whole Katana and Co thing. Uh, it says it jumps forward in time again to that was a week ago. And then it's just Baraka yeah. with the baby on his back and he's going through Outworld. And then he sort of looks behind him and there's like a whole army of Shao Kahn's undead warriors. And right. Baraka's reaction is, what? Uh oh! <laughs> yes, like how long really has this like also, rabble of undead been following him stealthily? 
if we're editing the panels, can we also correct it? So instead of saying like a week has passed, it just says it's been and everybody knows Incredible. what it means. <laughs> I like um when he like turns to face them and he like cuts the blades across the ground. That's just like a badass swordsman yeah. move, you know, when he's like set up for the fight. I also like that he's mad at Shao Kahn because Shao Kahn replaced his army like Baraka's army, the mutant army, you imagine the yeah, undead because they're not. So yeah. like, that's the reason he wants to take Shao Kahn down. Again. I like, that's the main reason he's like, he fired. Yeah. Me. He like, he took his right. purpose away, man. This is a good story. Cause now he's got a new purpose and it's to protect this avatar baby. It is an avatar baby, isn't it? In right? theaters this December. <laughs> avatar <laughs> avatar baby. So, so Shao Kahn has dispatched Scorpion to capture this baby. And somehow he does that in this fight. We don't see that, it. Like Baraka's got the baby on. I his have back. a note. Three panels later, it's yeah. Gone. Like, does he just teleport in and yoink the baby away from him, like while Baraka's fighting? Because you just have a couple of close-ups he of must. Baraka's face as he's kind of decapitating undead army people, zombies, and then suddenly yeah. it cuts to a wider shot, and just the baby's not with him anymore. It, I guess. I mean, it must have been because he does. He teleports away a few. Also, times if in this, if right? we skip forward a little bit, Baraka basically uh, defeats Scorpion by destroying the the gemstone that's controlling the armies. And in that panel, he's yes. crashing the gemstone, but we have no idea where that is in relation to Scorpion, who we assume yes. is has it around his like neck or something. It's just like in it mid. Like it might be if you look at the page where he's standing in front of the moons with the baby. It's hanging from his belt. Yeah, but like they don't communicate at any point that Baraka got close enough to then have it pinched between blades that he's hoisting up into the air. I, it's weird. So hang on, there, there is a on the page before yep. page eighteen, you do see Scorpion holding it in his hand, and he makes a big. I, I, I have a note there saying, "Scorpion, what are you doing?" Because Scorpion loudly just says. Uh, with the Death Stone, I have called forth the Legion of Dead, and he's like holding up this thing. This thing, yeah. See it? Look at it. This is what and I. You use. can see he's looking away from them, and Baraka's just looking at him. You know, he's kind of just giving away. Also, everything. in the next panel, Baraka's reaction to Scorpion saying, "With the Death Stone, I have called forth the Legion of the Dead." Baraka says, "Bah, they are dead." <laughs> <laughs> it's like thanks Baraka <laughs> Sick burn by Baraka. Like, yeah. smart guy this one this yeah. Baraka I like that he's like I. it doesn't matter they're dead fuck it who cares I'll kill him but again but before they have what, this what am I supposed to fear being dead by the dead <laughs> LMAO but doesn't Scorpion say some shit about that he says he's gonna like give him a reason to fear death or something cause being dead sucks ass or whatever yeah why fear death when we all will one day make that journey? In fact, some of us will make it more than once. That's actually a pretty That's sick a pretty line, line, honestly. Big, the yeah. mummy, death is only the beginning vibes. Yeah, and so Scorpion takes the baby, teleports away before Baraka can do anything about it, which then forces him... And Baraka to famously just reacts and he just goes, Fuck! <laughs> he does. That, uh, That's in the comic that book. Baraka catchphrase. Look. <laughs> the famous Baraka yeah. catchphrase. Fuck! <laughs> but which, which like forces him to go back to uh, the the alliance and ask for help, which he's not done before. But and he doesn't really get. No, he doesn't, but can I just say I had a minor existential crisis in this moment, right? Because there's a nice big close up of saying of you know Baraka's face, and he's kind of you know looking a bit forlorn, and he says Baraka need help. Right, which is kind of like a cool little sure. moment for the character. <laughs> we all do. That's going to be, by the way, the thumbnail. Art right, yeah, for Baraka need help. That really well, should be. Yeah. So I was looking at this. Right. I think that's it. Does Baraka have lips? No, he doesn't. No, right? he does not. So I looked. Holy I looked shit. back at the, you know, the front cover, which is like a more quote unquote realistic drawing of him, and you can see something that maybe resembles like a bottom lip, maybe. But then you look at how you know he's portrayed in the games and in every single shot here right and it's just teeth like it's teeth out all the time there's nothing that ever covers up yeah. his teeth or is over the top of the teeth they're always visible they always interlock perfectly which looks pretty cool um uh -huh. but it's just there right and then i was thinking if you don't have lips how do you say the word baraka carefully oh, shit like if you just clench your do, teeth do, and try to say the words baraka need help without using your lips what happens Baraka need help. Baraka need help. Baraka need help. 
It actually okay. just sounds exactly like saying Melbourne. <laughs> Melbourne. We're going to hell. That's the that's Melbourne. the in to getting the perfect Australian accent. <laughs> Withdraw your lips completely. Your, you just keep your lips. Unless still. he has like a yeah. series of like inner lips behind his teeth. Shout out to this cover, by the way. It is pretty badass, and I'm gonna say it was done by Mark Brill because his name is on the front cover, but not in the credits mm. page. It is a pretty so, sick cover. Brill, Brill job, Brill job, Mark. <laughs> Um, yeah. Yeah, he he does have lips on that on that cover. Like the teeth it's, are yeah. interior, and that he has gums as yeah, well. Yeah, there are gums. It's pretty gnarly. Whereas on the outside, it's like there's no gums. It's just eyes, nose, teeth. Like his mouth is stitched over with yeah. teeth. So he needs help, and someone answers his call for help, and it is Noob Saibot, who we have not seen in this comic series up to this point. This is Noob Saibot's first, and I believe only hmm. appearance. Considering after this, there's only one other issue we haven't covered, and it's Tournament Edition 2. And so. his immediate help is beating the shit out of Baraka. Also, <laughs> yeah. his, his character is just that he loves secrets. He's all about the hot goss. Right? <laughs> yeah. This is, again, <laughs> they had no story to work with. They're like, I don't know, there's secret characters in Mortal Kombat 2. Let's put him Wait, in Wait, he's a book. secret character? He must love secrets. <laughs> right. Do they, he fucking, he, when they told him he was going to be a secret character, he fucking, he was so excited. Oh my god, you couldn't get him to shut up about it. Ironic ironically, you could not get him to shut up about they it. They misheard the game developers when they said he's a secret character. They're like, oh, okay, that's that's his whole vibe. Oh, yeah. he's all about the secrets. It's secret. like in short biography, but okay. <laughs> um he, he's heard the whispers of paupers and princesses. So you know he's all about them <laughs> secrets. It's similar to who okay, who here has seen the noob side bot episode of Mortal Kombat Me, I'm I raising have. my hang on. I'm clicking. I, yeah, I think so. I'm clicking Ray's hand right, in I've the Zencaster interface. I don't see. Oh, there it is. All right. Yes. Uh, similar to in that, how in that they're like, okay, so Noob Saibot's the secret character in Mortal Kombat 2, so we're gonna make him a hidden fighter under the city that Ciro has to find, just to kind of like pay reference to mm-hmm. that. Um, Charles Marshall is just like I don't know. Just he, he likes, likes secrets. He loves secrets. That's this ca- one character illustrates the difference in thinking between Conquest, something really good, and Malibu Mortal Kombat. Something not very good. <laughs> Can I actually highlight a, a piece of dialogue from Noob Saibot in please. regards to secrets? <laughs> There's a line yes, where he says, please. where he's talking to, I think it's Scorpion, and he says, there are no secrets, Ninja, except those that keep themselves. And what? <laughs> what does that mean? I don't know, but I'm getting the tattoo tomorrow. <laughs> it's going to be a recreation of that whole panel. On your back, like the Ben Affleck tat. <laughs> Yes, to be a giant Malibu style noob cybot. I I like um. It's it's interesting. They just didn't know what to do with the character, right? Obviously, the Baihan stuff hadn't been established at this mm-hmm. point, so they're like, I don't know. We got to give him a story. Well, interestingly, if Sub Zero in this is Bihan, then who is noob cybot? Just he's just noob just cybot, like in Mortal Kombat yeah, Conquest, just guy. some other dude, just some secret guy. Yeah, the secret yeah, that's yeah, that's the boy. difference in. In Conquest, he's a secret guy, and in this, he's a secrets guy. <laughs> uh, so he's like, "Yeah, I'll help you out. Sure, let's go get your baby yeah. back." And then there's a there's I a want my baby back, <laughs> baby back. Baby. <laughs> so this next scene, um, I have a question about what's actually happening yeah. here. So Scorpion uh-huh. is kind of talking out loud, saying, "Hey, the Emperor wants you dead, but why? You don't seem so extraordinary to me." Um. And he has a moment where he kind of holds the child and has a flashback to, you know, what happened in his life at a young at a younger yeah. age. And is that something that he's just remembering, or is there something intrinsic to this child that is causing that to happen specifically? I don't know. Probably just remembering. I I would wager that he's just remembering because this is also the first time we've seen anything like this about Scorpion's past. Mm-hmm. Like this might be the first time we saw any hint that he was just like a dude in Japan before the Scorpion shit happened to him and he had a wife and child who were killed. Mm-hmm. And this is where we get the editor's note, right? Is it is yeah, this yeah, is Yeah, you you need to note. read this word for yeah. word. It's very it's very important. Editor's note. According to Mortal Kombat Legend, Scorpion was killed by the hand of Sub Zero. Mark. <laughs> this this is I don't they've addressed that um Sub Zero killed Scorpion, obviously. Like Scorpion's on this quest for vengeance against him. That was like issue one or two of uh Blood and Thunder. Yeah. 
it's come up a few times in this series, but this is the first time that they've been like like shown that maybe Scorpion had a wife and child. I think that this might be the first time it's been shown in any Mortal Kombat media, mm-hmm. right? Because this when did this book came out? Nineteen ninety, I think it came out in ninety five. To, to me, the the wording of that and having that explained there, yeah, reads to me like they have a you know an edict from up high saying people need to be able to read this who have no idea what Mortal Kombat is. Yes, and, which is why the characters name exactly. themselves on every single yeah. page. And why right. you would need to m- put a note in about something that would be so blatantly foundational for anyone who's taken in any amount of Mortal Kombat media at any point. Yeah, unless they've only seen the movie. Yeah. It's also really funny because they just throw the living forest in. Like, it's just given that right. people would know what that is. It's from the games. Yeah. It's from the Goro Prince of Pain series where Kung Lao punched one to pieces. And I think it's in, is it in Raiden and Kano we see it again too, Corey? You don't remember. Why would you remember that? Um, I think it is though. Yeah, like that's where like Raiden loses his powers and dies or whatever and drops Kano into the living forest, right? Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, it makes as much sense as these comic books do anyway. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so then uh, Noob Saibot and Scorpion show up and they kick or Noob Saibot and Baraka show up and kick Scorpion's ass. I like that Noob Saibot has a spear yeah. for two reasons. Okay. The first is, uh, in Mortal Kombat 2, Noob Saibot had a spear. He was just a palette swap Scorpion. That checks out. So that's a nice little Easter egg, right? Not even an Easter egg. It's just like what they knew about him from mm-hmm. the games. They're like, I don't know, secret, secrets and spears. That's what yeah. we got for this guy. Uh, but the other thing is, it's is this is the first time we've gotten an, a proper spear like rope spear in these comic books because they give scorpion a spike ball on the end of his not a spear so he doesn't like ever get to do the actual like spear throw pull thing in the comic books he just like swings around a spike ball on a rope huh yeah Yeah. this does look really cool that's crazy yeah and i think that the fight was pretty well drawn overall easy to follow it was short but the poses were dynamic and the action was good and we get to see scorpion with his like skull head and stuff Mm -hmm. my favorite my favorite little moment is the the blue baby just going way in the background of one of the frames oh yeah right when he's got the when, it, when uh scorpion's got the fire also head. in the next frame uh, scorpion with his skull face gets kicked in the face by noob Sabot and he says yeah <laughs> so it's kind of like a nice rhyme effect <laughs> with the baby Wah, just listen, yeah just listen to this writing you burn like a candle ninja but noob Sabot is as the wind right Charles Marshall really uh, striving for an Eisner Award for this. Dropping issue. bars. I know. And to say that while you're like jump kicking someone is just a power move. Yeah. How long is that? How fast did he say that? Or how slow was that jump kick for him to get all of that out? <laughs> he just said it real fast. <laughs> That's probably why it doesn't actually make sense. sense. <laughs> right. It doesn't really make right. sense because he was just thinking about that as he was flying through the air. Yeah. <laughs> so from here, Baraka does in fact somehow break the Death Stone. Yeah. And now Scorpion's fucked. Scorpion's like, check out my sick Death Stone. Look what it does. Yeah. So the, I don't think we've established the Death Stone that he carries is like Shao Kahn's way of reviving this army of the dead that is following right. them around. I believe and- that came up in Battle Wave issue one or two. Hmm. But. I also wouldn't be surprised if this is the first time they're mentioning it. I yeah. can't remember. So Baraka... The Death Stone has a, come up. Yeah. Just okay. okay. So Baraka destroys the Death Stone and that actually disintegrates the army of the dead. Right. So it's, it's just Scorpion now. You may the rings say, completely ripped this off. You may say that they crumbled. Monk crumbled. Mm, what is that? Leaving, tenuous, leaving a pause there. I don't... For, I, I don't know what that means. What is the mo- who? I'll put the cricket sounds in in post. They they actually destroyed Tony Shellhub in that in the next <laughs> panel. That's why it's the monk crumble. <laughs> Michael Jordan Duncan <laughs> Tony Shellhub and he <laughs> monk, and monk was canceled. Dust. They got they got Michael Jordan as a guest uh, guest <laughs> on that show, and he just. Yeah, dunked him and Monk crumbled him it was, and that's it, it, it was over. It was the 90s, he was showing up everywhere. Can I also just say, on this yeah. page 20, as Scorpion is shouting no, he has like the most muscles ever drawn on any human. 
Yeah, yeah there's he, a this, lot of that in these books. This happens, right? Just like so, nonsense smokes. musculature that has no business being on a human body of His any arm sort. Of is like suggestion. a torso. Yeah, Smoke gets the same treatment. I think Sub Zero gets it. I think it's this artist specifically, um, Vincent Hook. He has like this. muscles along the bones of his ribs, basically. There's, he would not be able to put his arms down at his side. <laughs> no. That's he why they're wouldn't. up in the air, man. Right. But he's had him down. I don't It doesn't matter. It's uh, disgusting, frankly, and I don't like looking at it. <laughs> but yeah. And then what the fuck else happens in this? Noob Saibot says, I'll take the baby someplace where it will be safe. And, and then, then Barack is like, oh, like, beans. No, please don't take my child. But he does it anyway. And then Scorpion get, also like, like Scorpion just dissipates after he is kind of defeated. He just goes away. Yeah, he teleports away. Yeah, he's gonna uh, uh, get punished by Shao Kahn, and he knows it because he fucked up, lost the army. What do they say? Um, uh, my <laughs> there wife. are fates. There are fates worse than <laughs> death. I will, I will show, show them, them to, to you, you should you fail. That's what Shao yeah. Kahn told him. So is that's like straight out of Mortal Kombat Ten, right? When uh, Raiden removes Shinnok's head, because Shinnok's like, "You can't kill me. I'm a god." And Raiden's like, "There are fates worse than death." And then we that's right. That's, he does. He does. Oh, say yeah. That. Removed his head. Yeah. So that's I'm I'm willing to bet when we read Tournament Edition number two, uh, Scorpion is headless throughout. <laughs> so yeah. So then Noob Cybot has the baby, but there's a twist. Yeah, he's just like, you know, you think it's gonna wrap up all nicely, and he's like, yeah, she's got a role to play in the future of Outworld, and then whisks her away yeah and barack is left alone stalking through the uh non-living forest looking like a badass i just want to read like the last um panel yeah it's pretty cool actually yeah charles so marshall says, uh, just pulling out all stops it's it's, it's baraka going through a forest with like the moon in the background lighting him to sort of i don't know uh highlight his loneliness and it says although he has often been a loner he has never felt this alone a chill wind blows through him, touching his very soul. In the days to come, his thoughts will turn often to the child. Her bright eyes and the hope for a better future gave him something worth living for. Something worth dying for. Something <laughs> worth fighting for. <laughs> the end. <laughs> That's like... The hardest anything involving Baraka has ever gone. <laughs> Just like <laughs> Again, Charles Marshall like cared about this story more than he cared about any of the Mortal Kombat comics he wrote. Like the way that Kevin Tangeroan cared about the Scorpion Sub Zero stuff in Legacy, yeah. Charles Marshall fucking cares about Baraka. Why else would Baraka get a one shot? Right. Baraka's on some like, real like Drake sad boy shit. <laughs> no, lost yeah. panel. <laughs> yeah, he is. It's weird though, because he's like a cool character and he's got a great design. And in the games, he's like super memorable, but nothing but, from his story, right. at least coming from the games, really kind of sticks in your mind. Exactly. He's just like the mon- he's the cool looking monster man. Yeah, he's always kind of there and just sort of doing something vaguely tangentially related to the main story, and usually comes and goes without too much. Uh, too much hassle. Yeah, we we had two issues to spend with Jax and Sonya in the Special Forces miniseries. Neither of them got this much development. Like yeah. Raiden and Kano special, neither of them got like this. Liu Kang, the de facto protagonist of Mortal Kombat shit at this time, don't know fucking anything about him in this universe, like at all, except I think he's an architect. Not really sure. <laughs> um, but for some reason, like Charles Marshall's like, nah, Baraka, this is my story. This is what the story that I want to tell. And I think it's a good one in the context of the rest of the series. Uh, outside of the like universe of Malibu Mortal Kombat comics, it's not great, but yeah, I think it was fun. It was a fun to read. They managed to and get a decent amount out of 20 pages. They did, which is more than I can say for most of the other comics in the series as well. Certainly more than they got out of the Kung Lao one shot. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think this is better than the Katana and Molina one, which is like a kind of a fan favorite. This nice. might be, I think Yassine said he read this and it made him care about Baraka for the first time ever. And I can see where he's coming from. I'm not, it doesn't, I'm not like going to like read Baraka fan fiction now, but I definitely care about the character <laughs> a little I bit am more. I'm going to write it. <laughs> I probably, I probably, I'll, t- I'll try it. Sure. He's just constantly asking about help with oranges. <laughs> 
give me orange, eat orange, give me eat orange, eat, give me give, eat orange, give me give baby, me, give me, give me baby, hug baby, blue baby, give me blue baby, <laughs> hug baby. There you go. You get your opening line. Yeah. Uh, that's th- I just wrote the whole thing, honestly. Uh, Corey, you were kind of eh on this, huh? Yeah. I mean, like, it, not in the not in the way that it's like horrible or anything. That's not it. I think I'm just, these are all feeling so the same now that it would have to do something particularly spectacular to win over my cold, brittle, dead heart with regard to some of these now, and I just don't know if it's doing that. And the bare minimum of character depth and an interesting story is just not enough. Yeah, I guess. Well, in 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 Corey's defense, like I'm I'm coming to this as like my first, you know, MK comic experience. So I have the novelty factor of, oh yeah, this is kind of cool. Yeah. But what if what if you read twelve more and they were all (laughs) this but worse? (laughs) Yeah, this is this is the best that they get. You've reached the peak. <laughs> I will say some of them, like those early issues, the art, the mm-hmm. um, Patrick Rolo art really did a lot of heavy lifting on them. They are very fun to look at. Yeah. Probably more fun to look at than this one, in my, in my I opinion. I think they're, yeah. Uh, I do like it when they just go full 90s with the colors. I think the reason yeah. that I like this one so much is because it really is like the only one to give Baraka some kind of interior lived experience. Yes, which is like it's cool. really saying something for him in general across the media of Mortal Kombat. But um, it was something new, new, and that actually kind of kept me. It's only like the last two pages where that's really like a thing, but like it did give me a new kind of appreciation for, I guess maybe the potential for Baraka, like in media, like because he's often right. considered to yeah. be just kind of a lackey who is just serving yes. whichever master sees something in him and i think that in itself is kind of interesting because it's like oh he has so little i guess self-worth that or maybe he's just been living so much on the level of like i need to survive in this wasteland that he never really thinks about anything that's beyond himself and so it's kind of like if the any time that he's given something that is beyond himself he's just like oh my God, this is like the new meaning of my life. And I find that really interesting as a character. Mm. Well, they stuck all the like lame lackey shit on Reptile in this series. So there was room for Baraka to grow like beyond that. Yeah, I was just going to um, say, he's he's like the, he's, he's, he's an advanced version of what happens with Reptile all the time, which is he's right. a cool, cool character design who they never seem to be able to quite dial in to giving, you know, an interesting story that you really care about outside yeah. of weirdly somewhere like it sounds conquest. like this story well, has have a gun some kind of dysfunction if you want a story in modern mortal Kombat games you have to have a gun <laughs> it's just true that was actually a key for you <laughs> to do the the reptile dysfunction sound bold bit okay well, i'll i'm gonna uh-huh. drop it in now and i'll slide it over in uh in post sounds like this sh- comic has a reptile dysfunction <laughs> Seamless comic. Perfect. I'll slide that comic over. <laughs> Wait, can we get a clean comic? <laughs> yeah. Mm. Comic. comic. Oh, sorry. <laughs> That's right. awesome. Now, on the count of three. One, comic. two, three. Comic. comic. Now, okay. when you edit comic in, you have to leave a little bit of the movie. Oh, of course I will. Yeah. So <laughs> it, you can you can hear that it's been stitched together twice. I will put a lot of effort into making it sound like I put no effort in at all. And now Perfect. you need to go, and, and that's the only part of the show that's going to get edited, right? It might be. I better make it. I better make a note of the time. It's been right four about hours. Two hours. Okay. two hours. Holy shit! Two hours. We have talked about this, Baraka. Well, no, well, no we two hours. hours we have, two hours. We have Don't turn this hung out with each other in a video into call. a house of lies. For like 45 minutes, we've talked about the Baraka issue. Okay. The most that anyone has ever talked about this Baraka issue. That's likely true. Turns out there was a lot to say. Yeah, I liked it. I think if you're going to read one of these, it's the one to read. It was printed uh, in Canada, apparently. You also don't have to. Let's go! (laughs) (laughs) The only thing that Canada has contributed to the world. That's Uh genuinely true. (laughs) To that in this podcast. Yeah, sorry about that, everyone. No, you're not. You're not sorry. <laughs> All right, Celsius boys, should we wrap it up? Sure. 
Why not? Okay. Any anybody want to plug anything? I don't. keep in mind Twitter may not exist by the time this episode comes out. Mm. Yeah, I don't I don't think people should follow me on Twitter anyway because I just post wordle shit still, even though that's yeah. like he does be doing that. But you are crushing it mm. on on the wordle. Mm. I don't know. I would say you know what you know what I'll plug, even though you you don't uh, want me to mention him by name because he's cursed. Uh, <laughs> but let's say someone who has another Mortal Kombat podcast that was behind a Patreon paywall for reasons is now perhaps complete and it's free to jump in on that discord server which is a really cool you know, place to hang in order to plug sure, something yeah. you do also have to name it though right i will say if you know you know if there's you know, a mortal you... podcast discord you can find <laughs> <laughs> all right i'll say it there's also an mk podcast discord sure it is invite only unless you give us money on ko-fi.com slash mk podcast yeah fund our schemes oh, yeah or if you're a friend of ours and we just invite you directly so i i have a a quick and then i know this is we're out of plug territory already so i'm, I'm nah, apologies keep, in advance keep plugging keep no no, plugging. no it's it's a it's a question for you and paul i said keep plugging it's a question can I, can, for yourself uh, I'll, I'll allow it and for Corey. And maybe I maybe you're not privy to this information yet, or maybe I'm not privy to re- receiving the information yet. Uh-huh. But you're you're getting near the end of the uh, the commentaries. We are. Do you? What's the what's the plan? The plan for the future of of this show? Yeah. Uh, do something anytime. There's a Mortal Kombat thing to talk about. Nice. But we got plans for other shows that I don't think we're ready to talk about yet. Oh no! If you're interested yeah. in this, but maybe with a slightly less limited palette, maybe we'll have good news. You know how we've been doing episodes on like Raven and Pacific Blue, oh. and maybe by this point, Sabrina the Teenage Witch. And speaking mm-hmm. of which, um, uh, please, please, speaking speaking of please which. have us on for the 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 Raven <laughs> ep two episode. Oh, absolutely! I have things to say. Yeah. Your profile picture on Discord is still ski. <laughs> <laughs> the SS Brewski, baby. Okay, yeah. You're probably the, the only, only person on Discord, the app, with probably that. the only person on the internet <laughs> with that profile picture. <laughs> All right, we're gonna have to do a Raven episode too, and, and you'll be on it, and also you, Paul, if you'd like to be. Well, we'll 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 see. We'll see how I go. <laughs> I don't have the um. I don't have a fond, not a fondness, because that suggests that I would be predisposed to not liking it. But I just, I don't have a familiarity with it. I've only sort of been That's exposed ever stopped to me. it via, yeah. your, <laughs> via your great podcast. And can I just say, uh, before we jump over to Dom for his uh, his plug situation, it has been a pleasure being on here. Oh, shucks. And uh, it's legitimately been like, I don't know, a weird experience to like, stumble across mortal podcast and then extra stumble across PodQuest, and then for that to turn into this weird multi-year at this point thing where i feel like i've now actually you know made some friends along the way it's been kind of nice yeah man absolutely thank you yeah it's yeah. it's cool and weird and kind of strange and you know we're always having Can we layer that uh sitcom <laughs> special episode music of <laughs> that I was going to hit the button, but I was on the wrong page, and it would have played uh, okay. Dakota saying Tony Toretto's legendary <laughs> cousin. <Don." laughs> that would have been funny. Can we get that again? <laughs> and ruin the like, moment once more with feeling. No, I'm out. I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> no, I'm sorry, but no, th- but no. Thank you. That's very nice. Thank you. And also, yes, it's just it cool is. how like this is maybe the dumbest basis on which you can make friends with people, <laughs> and I think that that's just really great. Yeah. It's like, oh, how did you guys meet? Oh, well, I listened to them talk at me for two years, and then we <laughs> talked about a Baraka comic book for two hours. And then we, fu- <laughs> and then the one time we found time to hang out, we only were able to schedule it by virtue of making content about Baraka. Yeah. <laughs> and somehow and also, Yu Suzuki's sweat was mentioned <laughs> too many times. It just it came up several times. He's a wet guy. I don't know what else to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. Hey, Dominic, um, what's up? <laughs> what do you got going well, on? Well, first of all, I would like to <laughs> echo uh, Paul's sentiments there and say that it's been very... <laughs> oh, damn it. He gets... Very, the- very special. A very special lesson in friendship. Uh, joining this community <laughs> on on Mortal... This very specific community on Mortal Kombat 
that exists because of Ben Meckler's um, podcast as well as your Schemes. own various podcasts that we have enjoyed. Um, and I'm sure you will plug soon. Uh, I don't have I don't have much sure. to plug. I am on Twitter as long as it remains active <laughs> as a website. Um, you can find me. Right. Yeah, you've got some action movie takes and whatnot. Yeah, so you can find me talking yeah. about action and genre movies um, at Dominic, uh, currently Dominic Hart. The handle is at Dom X Hart, which is D O M X H A R T. Um, yeah, come and find me talking yeah. about action movies. I'm kind of going through in a phase of like going through uh, Netflix hidden gems that people aren't talking about at the moment, just because there's a bunch of stuff that got dropped in the past year that no one's talking about. So uh, join me on that journey. Nice. Paul and Dominic, thank you so much. Yeah, this has been really great. Man. On and also, episode. thank you for being uh, extremely supportive friends. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for being a friend. Oh, went down, the road down that road and back, back again. again. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> And he's yeah, a family guy. <laughs> I just if it should be pretty apparent to everyone right now that I have a, a hard time with sincerity, <laughs> but uh, genuinely appreciate both of you and hanging out with you. <laughs> and I'm <laughs> so, and I'm glad that I got to meet you. Likewise, yeah, yeah. it's cool making friends, and you guys are cool friends. Yeah, people have been, Corey, people are saying that. People are saying that. Corey, what do you got going on? People have been saying that sort of for a long time. I think it's it's finally mostly, getting, yeah. You know the attention mostly is, us just on our internal communications. Yeah. yeah, in our in our various locations, um, you know, if if you know, you know, you know. Neil, Neil, is there a way that you can somehow segue us from where we are now to the end to of the our podcast? initial conversation, but like when we started well, recording, wait, and well, then just wait, overlay the intro what was again. The initial the I don't remember it. Just a King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard ass bit to do. <laughs> I reckon I can figure one out as long as we knew what we were actually talking about in the open. I, I honestly, honest to God, I don't remember. I remember uh, Neil at some point saying, I think I'm going to start recording, and that was it. What if I actually started recording before and then what if told this, you I was recording after I already was. What if this Shit. is the segue? Much like us trying to remember what we were saying at the beginning, here's us talking about. Here's what, the beginning. Here's us talking about. Here's the beginning. Yeah. You know what? Yeah. Maybe we should just rewind back to the beginning and listen to it ourselves. Are you saying we should rewind back to the dawn of time? Mortal Kombat Conquest. Ca. Yeah. Corey, what do you <laughs> tell people about your stuff? Yeah. Or don't. It's been long enough. Mortal Kombat Conquest.ca. The other podcasts are there. If you care enough, you'll find them. Yeah. They made another one, Strat 2. Those are Corey's. Crew Expendable. That's mine. It's about alien stuff. This show, Jeff's show is on there. Oscar Buzz Kills. Uh, Combat Time is on there as well. And uh, Dominic and Paul, if you want anything you did on there, even just a picture. We'll throw it up there. Why not? It doesn't even have to be a picture of, of you. Any can, picture. It, can we just put up uh, uh, any Baraka picture? Needs help. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I'll, we'll throw that. We'll throw that up there. I'll, I'll get it. Wait, can we put the embed of the Baraka commercial? Wait, the what? Baraka commercial? Yeah, for the tablets. So there's like these Australian uh, tablets that are kind of meant to give you a bit of a, a perk up in the morning, particularly if you're. Oh hung over and basically you know it's kind of like emergency but like not oh, just yes, okay. the emergency. original ad is pretty funny because it's like this stunt man who like needs to get like ready to go to work falling down a bunch of stairs and when i say a bunch of stairs it's quite a lot of stairs that he falls down. a comical <laughs> amount of stairs so he, he, did you sh- is this in, in the our, Discord? Uh, it yeah, yeah yeah it's in the group chat yeah um all right uh keep telling so he me takes about these it. Tablets to basically give himself a perk up, and then he falls down a comical amount of stairs, and like that's that's his day job, <laughs> and he did it. He did it with the help of these tablets, and then it goes to and called it's called Baraka, Baraka which is B E R O C C A. It's got quite a good jingle. Um, yeah, it gives you back gives you back something your, that you were missing, perhaps yeah, your alliterated potential. It's like, what if a five-hour energy was Tom's? And now the podcast is over. 
for free. Yeah, I'm gonna hit stop. Anyone want to say anything? Yeah, just else before, before we do stop? that, can I get your um, history with Mortal Kombat? <laughs> well, the first Mortal Kombat game that I played was Mortal Kombat One on the Game Gear. I was working in the temple late one night when someone from Netherrealm gave me an awful fright. I was sipping some water because I have some thirst when someone from Netherrealm gave me the worst. He was a monk. I he grumbled, you see. He was a monk. It was a fatality. He was a monk. His bones were surely in trouble. He was a monk. And then he did the monk crumble. Ow! Monk crumble! I was pretty old even in the first place, but when I drank the water, my age began to raise. I got wrinkles on wrinkles, my face lay in case, and as I drink this water, I will turn to waste. He was a monk. I be grumbled to see. He was a monk. It was a fatality. He was a monk. His bones were surely in trouble. He was a monk. And then he did the monk crumble. Ow! Monk crumble!